Uh, and there were, there were the, the hallways spread behind two courtrooms, yep. and there were two holding cells. So if you had initial hearings and you brought five guys on the chain from across the street through the tunnel, they bring them up through the hallway, wouldn't have any access to the public, and they would hold that group in that holding cell, and then just one at a time bring them into court. Yep. That's what I would envision. And yeah. So in this, in Stark County, this was the holding cell. <laughs> Open. This was the jail commander's office. They had a little closet right here, and this is where the, the key control cabinet was. Are you able to say how many uh, clients can be held in the holding cell? <laughs> 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 Three or four. I mean, but we could you know, certainly increase the, you know, the size of that to be here. Okay. Then you might want to have two. Yeah. You know, because they don't get along. Gang or male, female. What's a little room? To the right of it. Is that a restroom? Or yeah. the second restroom. Yeah, that was the Much more efficient. Uh, toilet facility right off the judge's office. Oh, we didn't do that. <laughs> 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 when you talk to Judge <laughs> Kim Hall, um, interesting fact, he spent two nights in this jail before it was ever occupied. He said he felt like he should know what it's like to send somebody to jail. So he, he slept in here two nights. On the jail side? Go on. Yeah. And his comment was that it really wasn't that bad. It was pretty quiet. He said, I had a hard time finding a dark enough corner because we had night lights on for security. So he said he was dragging the mattress around trying to find a dark corner. <laughs> Can you find one? I don't know. <laughs> nice guy. Yeah. Okay, so if we can sort through a lot of the discussions and issues we talked about here, uh, not opposed to uh, court entry off of the main public entrance, if we can sort through some of the issues that we talked about. And if we can't do it, then we just can't do it and we'll end up putting it as a separate entrance. But I think it's probably going to be more efficient and easier to manage off of a central entry. Oh. Yeah, if we can accomplish two entrances, is, yeah. two entrances we have. Security. Security. Yeah, primarily. Yeah. So, did they have someone man there during court at the metal detector? Yes, during court. Just during court? Yeah. Because those, those, those doors were locked to where public had no access through that, that door right there. <coughs> And unless there was a court proceeding going on, of which then there was security there making sure everybody walked through the metal detector. And then there were two bailiff stations. What's the room right there next to the court? Or 200 the, mouse. To the left there no, one with one. the conference yeah, that? table. Oh, that's a um, car table. <laughs> <laughs> Kitchenette, break room for staff. I think moving, so the public will need to speak to your staff at some time. I would say with a little rearranging. Sure. So that way they're not having to come all the way down this hallway at all. Keep their movement just like we would people over there as little as possible so they're not going through, through everywhere or hearing what's going on so sure. it has a door open. The jury room. So we were to be bringing inmates through here, right next to the jury that's going there, put them in jail or not. I would bring this down. So when they get out of the jury box, they go straight into the room. Because the inmate, an officer will be with them, but they're really close to people might put them away forever. I think that needs to be looked at. So you're talking about the path of the inmate from the witness box? Back yeah, because they're going to walk right by the people that might put them away for life. Yeah. And that's one reason why we had a bailiff station right there to point taken. We might be able to I mean, we, can, we, we might be able to switch those. Mm -hmm. um, and move the witness stand. I can also say, and this is something that we can sort out later, but um, I don't believe that that setup where you have the plaintiff and the defense both facing that direction is uh, conducive to a, to a jury trial. I think you've got to have, a, the, the jury has to have an opportunity or the ability to have a view of both parties. Um, they're going to want to look at a defendant they're going to want to watch it. They're going to want to watch. They're going to, they're going to want to look at the prosecutor. They're going to watch that prosecutor's behavior. Um, so if, it, and it may be as simple as putting, 
putting one here and one here, but and, and again, maybe that's uh, maybe that's getting into the weeds well, and stuff that we can't. It is a little bit, but keeping in mind that that box that we're talking about needs to grow in the vertical direction to accommodate the approximate 70 of the gallery. Point being is there may there will be an opportunity to. Great range of spreads of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm thinking too, I mean, we're just going to have to have somebody here. I, I really think so because, you know, having the public, you know, wandering all the way down, trying to, they're going to come in and they're going to want to know, like I say, when, when's, when they bring in sure. Bobby out. And, uh, and they'll be, or they'll be here for a pre trial. Where's my attorney? So they'll be wandering all over that space there. So we need somebody to head them off at the pass and be able to... So, so to Jasper's point and your point, for example, in you know this area right here, if we didn't have you know an IT closet area, area and a kitchenette staff area, and this, for example, is where you had the deputy clerk, for example, and some of your court staff, to where when somebody came in from the public, Right. You know, there's sheriff administration. There's Jake. There's the court uh, staff. You know, there'll be signage there, clearly delineating. They, they they can go through the metal detector, and then there'll be somebody there from the court staff or clerk that they can talk to. And you know, I'm I'm here for pretrial. I'm here because I'm a witness for the prosecutor in a bond hearing. I'm here, you know, for whatever. But I mean, we'll have dozens of those people every day when we're having criminal court. Yeah. And, you know, it wouldn't be good to have them wander very far from that metal detector. What about conference rooms? The lawyers are going to need to want to talk to their lawyer, to their clients. Um, are there any in there? Yeah, so the Stark County concept, we have them right here. Okay. And how many? Two? There were two. Um, what about custodial clients? So I guess what I'm wondering is there are times when, well, right now, I mean, there's a lot of times that an attorney's going to want to have a chat with their client who's in restraints. Um, are there, is there anything that accounts for that in terms of the design? Um, there is on the jail side. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess. So a lot of times the reason, so I have my pretrials, I have the defendants always there. And it is a huge pain for the sheriff to bring a chain over. I mean, it's it's a mess. Sure. But uh, but having them there is one more chance to possibly work a case. Out. <coughs> so I want them to be able to talk with their attorney. Maybe the prosecutor pitches a crazy Eddie deal, and and they and they they need a place to go talk to them. In Mike's case, they're talking to him like there's, there's chairs just like this, and you're talking to your client, having your privileged attorney-client relationship, right. while you're you got two guys sitting next to you. So, I guess what I'm I didn't know if you are accounting for or if there is any account. If we're just going to have a regular conference room and that's what we're going to use, um, at least one of them needs to have pretty visible glass so that the, the deputy can keep, keep eyeballs on things. Yeah, and again, I'm sorry for getting into the weeds. Well, it is a little bit, but those, these are the types of conversations we need to have. So let us go back and work on you know, a sketch in conjunction with everything else we're going to talk about here tonight. And we'll come back, and we're not going to hit the nail on the head the first time, but it's just a conversation that we'll continue to polish <clears throat> as we get. Good question. Yeah. Is that just dead space? I mean, outside, the other side of the jury room? Uh, that's the exterior. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the exterior. So. Okay. What if, what if you move the jury room up, so the jury would come right out as we're looking out, right out to south, and go right in the jury room. Bring your kitchenette area right where the jury room is. Then you could make the kitchenette the lawyer client. You have you could have two two good sized rooms right there for them to. Oh, I think it's interesting. Discuss. So in other words, if we had a box like, like that, just, just move your your jury room right up. Turn it this way. And it would be flush right across with the benches, but you'd have an access where the jury comes right out, goes right into their deliberation room. Then move your, you have to have your kitchen dinette area, put that there, that would be good access. And then make the kitchen dinette area divided up a couple 
return players, dependents, yeah. and you're right off mm -hmm. the courtroom, but yet you've got a privacy. Well, keep in mind that that can do anything you want because it's a green site. I mean, this is what I'm saying. That's not that big an area. They had an existing to do something. So but it's kind of wasted space the way it's set there right now. So. And just to be clear, we posted a lot of past projects to OneDrive. Um, no, no, not any one of those is going to meet Jefferson County's needs. To right. This is really just intended for conversational purposes. But to Jack's point, yes, we will absolutely customize the design to meet your needs. Okay. We're not looking to steal and pe <coughs> pieces and parts and put it together, but just for conversation. Okay. Page one. <laughs> yeah. Wait, one, one, one. That's right. There we go. Okay, so let, let, let's keep moving here. Um, public lobby and waiting. We will need space for that. We will need male and female public toilet. One comment, and because you, you'll see that right under that at 8.6, you'll see public toilet transgender. Typically, what we're doing is we're providing two public single occupant toilets, but we're labeling, labeling them as unisex. So we can avoid the whole discussion. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and somewhere, typically on the secure and the non-secure side, we like to have two dedicated, at least two dedicated janitor closets. Um, you know, so there's clear distinction between the secure and the non-secure side. We don't want to miss you know, those crossing. Any desire for any kind of a memorial in the lobby space? <laughs> for us. <laughs> Fallen officers, so first responders, <laughs> anything like that? Are you, you talking about uh, floor space or wall space? Either. Either. Uh, we do have a couple of things that we put up on the wall. Okay. And I'm not sure, we do have a fallen officer, I'm not sure with that. We would want him represented, I'm sure, in some way. But you're talking wall space. Wall I'm talking space. mainly wall space, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> public lockers. So if somebody from the public <coughs> comes in and they're going through the metal detector and they have a pocket knife, we're headed into the court. Will they be or cell phone or cell phone? We got that covered. Back out to the car. <coughs> uh, we've got lockers out here now. So okay. if you have a vehicle, you were requested to take it back out. If not, we've got was it 24. I forget. But anyway, just for a pad or an iPhone, you hand the key and, and you hand the key back. Ooh, so okay. It seems to be working well. Okay. Uh, oh, so some kind of public the lock right yes. there at the main if you're best for that kind of stuff. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Is um, okay. Now here's another conversation. For the jail component. Coming in and utilizing the same public entrance as a sheriff administration and court facility. If somebody comes in after hours, uh, Johnny gets arrested. <coughs> they need to talk to somebody in the jail at midnight. If you go back to Perry County uh, floor plan real quick. There could just be a phone out in the secure lobby and they can talk through the phone. Yeah. Let me show you a Perry County how we address that. He's full time guy in intake now. Do we have a full time guy in intake? Uh, I mean, the jail staff. Oh, you mean, so we have someone in control 24 yeah, 7. Yeah, bench 24 7. So at Perry County, I'm going to hijack this again. So here's the, the main public entry. Um, this is uh, work release. They just had some offices here, but they had to come in and do some uh, work and where they came in and reported. Uh, this is the sheriff administration component over here. This is video visitation. 
This is intake booking. But there's a window right here with direct access. <coughs> you now it was filmed, so they couldn't see back in to the intake booking. But there was a speed port there, a package pass, a paper pass. So if somebody came in after hours and needed some type of assistance or just needed to talk to somebody, the correctional officer that's this man 24 7 post could walk right up there and communicate if they needed to pass something back and forth they could and then they also have direct line of sight into the video visitation so is the solid port in this south of that the the solid where, port. where do they where do they come in right here okay i would say no i would say they go into the vestibule where it's locked and secure and they just pick up a phone that goes to the control operator because now you have the one person supposed to be manning the booking at a window well, talking well, to someone else. Just, yeah. So uh, I don't overly find it efficient. So if somebody comes in after hours, they pick up a handset. It goes to our control yes. operator, which is our version of a dispatcher. And then does a rover come down and deal with them? Well, they can talk to them and maybe just figure it out, whether it's a law enforcement issue, a jail issue, just like our does now, because there's a button out there, they press, talk to the operator, and he'll decide who goes and deals with it, okay. whether it's a jail supervisor or someone that's not manning the post. Okay. But now, like in this county, they just took the person that's supposed to be manning that post away. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> no dedicated uh, public jail entry. Deal with it electronically through a handset or <coughs> push to talk or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that B3? Uh, yes. Okay, so there's a one there, so we're going to have a one there. Correct. Okay. I don't want the general public. I'm not barking, I just want to make sure that. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that's nice about doing this live is, you know, Monday we can send this out. Okay. Just it's kind of the draft version. What we're looking for on the jail side is the general public can be nowhere around the secure housing area. I don't care if there's even a glass. We don't want them anywhere around there. Sure. Because what we, it's kind of what we have now, they go out in the alley, yell and scream, right. throw stuff. Yell at the judges. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How do you want the attorneys to have their deal with the inmates? Well, we looked at Decatur County <clears throat> and they had a really good concept. The attorneys never go into the jail whatsoever they don't have physical contact which is a really good idea they go into a booth they close the door behind them on the other side is the <coughs> secure side the inmate comes in yeah. sits down oh, it's secure yeah. glass. it's glass yeah. yeah there's no physical contact yeah. Yeah. Tepecanoe County is a good example the only thing I didn't like was the window for them to pass stuff to sign back and forth was just open it needs to be something that secures and locks so when it's not in use nothing you can get even though there's two doors on both sides Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so no vestibule, no metal detector. Um, there really no mail. Well, I think the metal detector, didn't we agree that it would be in the lobby? Yeah, so that's up here in the A series. Right. So I just didn't duplicate it. So we have one <coughs> uh, up in the A series for the main entry. A2. Yes. Um, the B1, B2, or zero. The male, female public toilet would be zero since there's no dedicated entrance for entry point for the public. Um, transgender zero video visitation. <coughs> I'm assuming we want public video visitation. Well, and that's something we have to look and see if we actually have to have it on site because now they can do it for free from home. Okay. Why even come down to the sheriff's office and sit at a monitor? We can sit at the same monitor at home. How are they told that they can do that? Like, how do they know? Well, right now we have brochures where they can currently do it, and that's how it's done a lot. So what we have to see if we're required to have it down here. But so if that's already in place and we have the monitor system down here, but if we don't have to have it, why do it? You're gonna to have to have at least some if for no other reason than the technology at the other end is not always what you think. <coughs> well, they can do it from the phones. Yeah, the grandparents that don't have a phone. 
I, I think you almost have to have at least one or two states. I agree with you that he's thinking outside. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. And the main reason we advise people to at least have two or three there for the public is because if somebody comes down there and they don't know that they can do it remotely, and they get down there and then find out that they've through travel, yeah, they're upset and they're angry. Yeah, I think just to okay. just to cure the, you know, keep that from happening is probably what they would used to. Um, so will that be six, 1,600 then, square feet? We're talking about No, no. It was like B7, right? Right, but yeah. Yeah, we're at B.7. So that 800 square feet, that was typically, was it? You might have, I feel like it's like that. You might have six other eight stations, yeah. like if you look at Perry County or Stark yeah. County, it's a larger yeah. room, because you have more consoles there for the visitation booths. Uh, but if we're only going to have two to three, that square footage would actually come down. Okay. Well, and that's what we do have to think about the growth. And yeah. Too, so. and, and Jack brought up a good point. And if you look at Perry County and Stark County, if you look at those video visitation rooms that are the public, the, for the public that are dedicated for that, you'll see consoles along the wall, and then you may see another you know, 10, 12, 14 feet. And it's like, what? Why in the world would you do that? Well, if you look, there's rough in there so that if you ever add another housing pod, you can add more consoles. Uh, Non-contact visitation. This is going to be an interesting conversation if you've been following Vigo County. If you've been following Vigo County and their federal lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the uh, <coughs> issues with Vigo County, uh, Ken Falk and Mike Sutherland, two attorneys, two separate lawsuits, um, had to do with non-contact visitation because there was not an opportunity. Um, for contact visitation, and that was one of the lawsuits. Um, so we need to have a discussion as to whether or not we want to incorporate non-contact visitation, contact visitation, just to give the opportunity for, Diego County had absolutely nothing, and that's what they got named for. For not having contact visits? They win or lose. <laughs> What's that? Do they win or lose? They won. They're getting a new deal. How do they do it? How do they do it? How do they do it? Uh, is it like a room with a glass partition and you sit on each side? Well, that's non-contact. But so this was actually. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a room, but there's a table. That hold hands. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> It's called that Vigo County. But it, it's, it's literally idea. just a room, just similar to like an interview room, where it's just a table and a you know chair on each side. Camera and everything in. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Audio. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this certain one's back on your transgender bathroom, right? Exactly. Our zero just became a one because we have to not for the bathroom, you know, space wise. So if you yeah, fill up the zoomed in there. Um, but similar to the comment I mentioned, the Tip Canoe County was also a good example. So you can see the inmate visitation from the secure side, inmate center, from the public side, attorneys or anybody else can enter, but also the attorney conference rooms. And that's where uh, inmates could enter and then uh, in attorneys could also enter and utilize that same room. So that would, th this is Vigo County, which so just grow, could, under construction. Sure, would purpose. Yes. Returning a favorite, I like that idea. When you get two for one. Yeah. Is this contact or no contact? Well, the ones on the left that you see with the little white bar, right. and that's the glass, so those are not contact. contact. And the two right there are contact or attorney conference rooms. Like Jackson. Well, which one are you going to call it when you submit it? <laughs> okay. Do we need any non-contact? Now, 
me tell you a horror story about Morgan County Jail. <laughs> where uh, their non-contact visitation, they kept that intact and they still had the video visitation. When inmates found out that the non-contact visitation was still up and operational, they were tearing up the video visitation stations because they wanted the non-contact visit with their loved one. So. But this other county, that's the reason they're building a new jail for the non contact that one. That's just one of several. One of several. Yeah. Yeah. Trouble. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. That's a big county. <laughs> because they did have contact rooms. Yeah. Yeah. They got in trouble for many things. A contact or a non contact? Contact. They didn't have we're, they So we're not talking the window. They didn't have a, a room where there could be physical contact. Correct. Like an interrogation room. Mm -hmm. in the medical room, it's for the dual purpose for the attorney to have the contact. So the deal is so like take it out to the worker like like we're person visiting the right there, right? Why would we have a stone in the contact room be used for the ride just the train? Well there's somebody right outside the window there watching. Yeah. Make sure nothing's being so passed. Kind of kind of right. right. okay. Well we very seldom have contact visits. Well, I so what is that like an eight by ten? That's not worth it too though. And especially if the room can be used as dual purpose. Right, or tour plane, so yeah. that's cheaper. So why don't we say one, one attorney slash mm -hmm. inmate conference room, um, if not maybe two, but it, they also serve dual purpose for contact visitation. So they both the same, right? Yeah. So we've got the interview yeah. rooms, is that? That's that be the same? That's going to serve the dual purpose. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we so we do we just leave those? Yes. Okay. No, I need to. Non-contact. Yeah. You want a dedicated non-contact visitation with the glass between? Based on what you told us, no. Well, well, wouldn't they do the same when they know we have a contact room? Oh, I'm gonna tear out this up so I can have my physical contact. No non-contact? No heavy. No non-contact. Who knows? It's your recommendation. I don't think they okay. Why don't we plan for two now with the understanding we're going to come back and revisit that? Uh, Chandler's closet, we will have. He says mandated the state. That's what I ask. Because I'd say no. For what? I would agree. No, the contact is mandated by the state. In Vigo County's case, they lost. That's why I said if it wasn't mandated, I'd say no. That's just one of those areas of supervision you got to screw with. But what we're saying is that will also serve as dual, dual purpose, dual function. Use as an attorney group as well. Right. But I'm pretty savvy on the ACI. I don't really think they make a statute so they can do it anyway. Yeah. Um, right. Can we say the Rick Yard is a contact room? <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, you probably should. I'm the contact room. I'm the contact room. I'm the on there for me to call me key. Uh, janitors, like I said before, we will, we will <coughs> provide those and we'll definitely have someone secure and on secure side. Uh, public entry, public lockers, since there is no public lobby, there's really no need for public lockers. No public lobby, no need for public lockers. And there's no dedicated receptionist because we're going to have a handset, public lobby. Uh, sex offender re register, is that done here? In our front office, we will have a reception. Yeah. Okay. I thought she said no. Well, well for the jail. 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 Oh, gotcha. So yes, no. So the jail has. For the jail, no. We decided they go to the dispatch, or not to their dispatch, which would be our control room. After hours. Yes. But well, during hours, we do have a jail room. Yes. So when they come, so off of the main lobby. Mm -hmm. 
they oh, the lobby is the one right. we're talking about. Just after hours, no one would be allowed in. Nothing. So you would have. Do you have people come in and register after hours? No. No. Right. So so when they register during hours, do they fill stuff out by hand? They won't be really. Well, 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 right now, I don't know how the site's been done. Right. Someone else in the front table does that right now. Because you're paying the building. It's a really long time. There's not a table in the whole thing. So there's no places out there. The few places are probably in one area right here. And when it comes in, that control room in the lobby, like what they were talking about, has a glass. It is down here at the end of it. But over here is the actual entrance. Yeah, we're talking about the 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 entrance. Y
the other side is this non-secure side. So we're putting up, you know, like a, a plate there on the wall, you know, where you take your photograph, we're putting up a remote camera where the lady sitting, the receptionist that's sitting behind secure ballistic grid glass is sitting there watching them, but she can sit there and fire, fire the trigger for the camera, for example. And there's no need to, to put them back into the space other than what you just mentioned, you know, they need to come in and talk and meet with whoever they've been assigned to. We need to accommodate that. Do you have to securely keep them out of your area or just close the thought? You walk in the door, you know, buzz, whatever. They go left during your administration area, they go right during the office. Or we have one entrance with a vestibule the door, another door goes in here, another door goes there. In other words, a quasi right. sally port. <coughs> yeah, and it's almost like a, a lobby off of a lobby. Exactly. Where you can get them out of the public lobby, there's another area you can let them into, you can deal with them separately there. We have a couple of meeting rooms off of that you know, semi quasi other lobby area. Which conceptually is sort of a security for your side. As opposed to, well, they turn left, they're automatically in there. Well, the, 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 here's the two things that, that we have to have. We're going to have to have an area, because many times they're interviewed, they're talked to. Uh, so I'm going to have to have an area where the person responsible for tracking them or staying up with what they're doing, they're going to have to have a desk. Everything records we keep of them is going to have to be locked down and controlled. Sure. Okay. So they're, they're, what I'm talking about is a space where they're at. They come from the lobby and they can go to this room, this office. Okay. Where the files will be kept. The file, as long as they're locked. Yes. Um, I mean, they have to be behind a locked door, and we keep them in a locked file cabinet. Okay. What if they came right in the lobby? They have a small office on the right. I think we could probably do that. Okay. They'd walk up to the register. Hey, I'm here to register. I'll take a picture. She says, okay, you need to go in that door. She buzzes them in. They shut the door. Then if they have to talk to somebody, they can come in. This is a mind mind side mind right back. Yeah, right. Yeah, in, in my mind, I'm thinking that they can be very similar to their energy room. Yes. Where somebody coming in, register comes in one side, office staff comes in from the other. It's on the back or the back of the There's a little table there that do it. <laughs> And like I said, if she can buzz them in or out, she controls the door. Right. So and the public can't go to know oh, what's in here. I will not talk the main lobby if there was a contact visitation or attorney client or anything off the lobby. Let him, let, let me jump in there to show you this one right here. So this is Decatur County. Yeah, so here's Decatur County. So when you walk in their lobby, they have a fingerprint room, an interview room, and another office space here make this office space for sex offenders. So they come in here, they, they sit in front of the desk, the person that's registering sits behind, talks to them, but if they need to come into the clinical side, there's a door here, they walk in, sex offender never goes anywhere. And the secure or non secure. They come in the lobby, go to the sex offender office. It's technically right off the lobby. Yeah. So and I think what we were talking about at that end of the table is similar, you know, where the the person doing the registering is walking in from this side the door from the other side there's a table there then there's an office somewhere for the actual sex offender office and which it can be portable because it can instead of being a desk computer it can be a laptop sure take an air hook it up register take pictures then take your stuff back to your main office <coughs> okay. 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 So we just talked about the registry, the office, and sex offender processing room. So we're putting one down for office and one down for processing room. The lobby, we're planning on directly off of the main lobby. So they would enter from one side somewhere to another. Okay. Sheriff's office. Um, somebody waiting to see somebody in the sheriff's administration is just 
central public lobby acceptable? Yes. Okay. We don't need a separate? No, I don't think so. Uh, receptionist admin support? Yes. <coughs> Sheriff's office, yes. yes. Uh, sheriff toilet shower? No, Sheriff will go with the same place everybody else does. Sheriff admin shower support? Shower with everyone else? <laughs> well, not the shower part of it, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <coughs> uh, sheriff's admin support? Secretary for you, okay, so. I, 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 uh, my admin assistant's at the front. Okay. So that is C.2. Yes. It goes down to zero. Uh, Sheriff's conference room? Yes. You want that attached to your office? Yes. Sir, or what? Actually, I'd like it probably between the chief deputy and my office. <coughs> like maybe you can come from. <coughs> yes. Plus corridor door? Yes. And one is sufficient? One conference room? Yes. Sheriff's administration. Oh, we're going to get to the crane room if we can do a full purpose. Then we're probably good. One. Chief Deputy, one office. Mm -hmm. Major Operations office. Yeah, we could probably use the conference room or anything like that. Uh, civil, civil process, any of those? Right now, we head down to the uh, admin support office. We let them all put there together. They're getting Charlie in So how many, how many people total do we, would we accommodate at this? Admins of course have a chair. They at the end and there there's two desks in there. One staffed by a full time ad, admin and one is a part time admin. Okay. So and so and like when he's talking about the civil civil paper services and everything, it's it's the those there. two there. All right. So back up at C point two, that needs to be sized to accommodate two people? Yes. Be comparable to what you have now. For expansion purposes down the line, it could be just to accommodate three. What? So what? What is the storage that comes with that? I'm sorry. Storage space that comes with that because all the records, accidents, case report, all that's up in that area. So typically, what we do is put a workroom and storage facility in close proximity oh, okay. to the admin support Thank area you. for just that type of thing. Okay. Thank you. So C18, 19, 20, 20. So civil office, civil process is zero because that functions up to the admin tra administration. Uh, training sergeant. We actually talked about just actually putting our sergeants together in one office. Is that not what we talked about? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking down here to see if later in it it has anything because they have the captain's office and others. How many offices do you need in total for the sheriff administration? Yes, I'm talking just about for staff sitting there uh, behind the desk. Like. Well, I'll reduce it to eight. What kind of officers? So, overall individual officers? 
individual orders by law. Yes. That would just be an office like for the sheriff, the chief deputy, the captain, you know, our sergeants, uh, then our detectives, that type of thing. Probably uh, all of the same size except for myself and the chief are a little bit larger. And the chief and yours are part of that team? Yes. Because we're gonna have we're gonna have people come in and we're gonna have to have an area that we can sit down and talk to them. That type of thing. I mean that's a daily yeah. It's sort of like the CID sections over here in 47 and down. Okay. So since we picked up the offices, we're going to skip those for now. We'll make sure they're in the program. Um, so let's jump down to, uh, do you need a cert room? Are you talking about cert or SWAT? Yeah, which one are you talking about? Cert inside different. the jail, SWAT is outside the jail. Yeah, cert, like any kind of office space, storage space. Well, you want to say inside? When you say sir, we're talking about jail extraction. Correct. Okay. Do you need any space for that storage? Yeah, I mean, we need storage for just equipment, and shields, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you need a storeroom within your office? Do I? Could that be a storeroom within your office for that? <coughs> no. No. I don't want to come in there getting that stuff. Um, as far as the offices that we just mentioned before, eight plus the chief deputy and the sheriff, total of ten. Did that include the crime scene tech office, sex offender office? Well, I think we already talked about the sex, sex offender. We right? it. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, ideal to have staff entrance for sheriff administration so it's not going through the public entry. Yes. Uh, area for mailboxes, workroom. Yes. And I assume they can be in the same space. Mm -hmm. uh, general storage, file storage. Yes. yes. One storage. Yep. Yeah. There's never enough storage. <laughs> um, long term file storage. How much that's electronic these days? Like, what do you have in the storage? Are we talking? Hard copy for yeah, some jackets and stuff like that. At least seven years. Well, we have to keep, I'm required yeah, to keep some records up to 15 years. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to have a dry span. I mean, and that's, I mean, that's all paper. And I, I mean, you just, it's not worthwhile to go back and try to do it. I mean, I just, I don't see doing that, but I can just stop it. And then we can rotate until we get to the point we don't need it anymore. It's my thought. Are you allowed to scan the trip? I think so. I'd have to work. I think we can. But it's just never been something we thought of. Just like that. Just like thinking about it. Yeah. So oftentimes for long-term storage, once we get into the design, oftentimes there's some space that we realize we can capture that's pretty cost effective mm -hmm. in some certain areas uh, that we usually usually capture that. Perry County was a classic example. Um, jail we're doing right now, jail addition in Huntington, we're doing that as well. Point being is I think that there's going to be an opportunity for some long-term storage just as the dime as the design progresses, we're like holy cow, we can put some precast down right there and they'll pick up 500 square feet of storage. 
cost effective so we're not actually right. growing the footprint. Right. So let's just keep that cognizant that we know that we want to pick up what we can as we go through. Squadron, yes. yes. Yeah. Size to accommodate how many people at one time. <coughs> if, they, if we were all together, um, in a squad room, how many people? Yeah. So here's what we oftentimes do in squad rooms. Perry County was this way, Stark County is this way. Um, what we will usually do is in a room, there's a countertop and either tack board, sometimes some wall cabinets above. And then for each station, there's a two drawer file that's lockable. So that theoretically, a patrol officer comes in with their laptop, they sit down for their time that they're there doing their paperwork. They take their laptop, so somebody else, the next person coming on the ship can sit down in the exact same spot. Plug into power, plug into data, do what he needs. He's got a lockable file cabinet. That makes sense? Well, I mean, well, it makes sense. And it, but you're talking about, you've got a file cabinet here, it's logical, he can put his stuff in, but if another guy can come in and sit down in the same spot, where does he put his stuff? Oh, this one's locked in the second drawer. There's two drawers. Oh, you haven't seen my guy. Okay. One drawer is not going to get it. Okay. Uh, what I had thought of was an open, uh, initially an open concept with kind of a, a each of them having, you know, just like these, uh, not a full room, but just a little, cubicle kind of like modular furniture. Yes, where they could each have a spot that they, and they would have a desk and a file cabinet there, like a two drawer file cabinet. Okay. And it just, uh, you know, it's kind of like what Switzerland County has. But they have their own space. But I don't know, you know, I can't tell you what a cubicle space is or what it costs to put in those, that type of thing. I know some, some officers don't even have you gotta, the you desks to work out of, though. What's that? Some place, some officers don't have desks to work out of, though. No, they sit on top of each other. That's what yeah. I'm trying to remedy. Maybe they could go paperless and so, scan the documents and store them on their computers. So how many would we need to accommodate in total? 22 right now. That's what I'm going to end up having. It's a lot of, I mean, that's well, yeah. it's a pretty good sized space. Yeah. yeah. About 18. It's dedicated workstations. So it's, it's still right up there. Okay. Something we'll have to work on. You know, I mean, it, 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 it'll end up being what it is. But the, what we do have going for us on this is that we're about ready to go uh, with the computers in their cars. So, you know, that's, that's definitely, that, I'm sorry? That's a, I bet that'll free up a lot. Yes, so that, that should free up space. So I think that's something that we just kind of put on the table and talk about it. Okay, agree. Uh, Because having cubicles gives them their workspace and there's a disaster because you don't want them doing the report and try to because they're always going to have to write stuff on paper you don't want them doing it on the side of the road or a parking lot taking their attention away from someone walking up to them so if there's like this morning there was a slide off the shift going off was still out the shift coming on was going out so potentially all of them could come back here and work on paperwork in somewhere warm where their attention and they're safe Right now, there's two, maybe three deputies out. Hopefully, down the road, that number increases. So, plan for now, so that way, well, oncoming and outgoing ships could actually work together in a safe place. But realistically, we're talking a number of, uh, at the most, five or six. So, what's that? How many guys would be most per ship? Well, we, don't, well we, don't, we, we, only, we do 12 hours. So there's only two shifts. But we break them up in a morning, noon, late stagger. Right. Um, tops, right now, probably what, six? Is about the best we would have. They're the most at any one time. So while, while we're discussing this, I'm thinking of lowering down desks and maybe some kind of, uh, kind of like what we do their mailboxes now, 
some kind of storage over on the side for each one of them where they just have to take the paperwork and walk it over to the church, which I think would probably save a lot of space. I agree. I mean, my guys, I mean, they don't have to have, they, they just want to have a place. Is what it really amounts to when they come in from the outside. So if we had a squad room that size to accommodate a designated, a shared work area to accommodate, let's say eight to nine people at one time, because currently there's like six, so if we're in for growth, let's say eight to nine people, but as long as we can solve the storage yes, and the solution. <laughs> what the guys are working with this desk right here the square footage area for is probably bigger than what they have for their two computers to sit store their paperwork have anything in it this table is bigger than what they have for 12 guys to share and so this it feels like they're in a broom closet and the morale issue stinks for them on that. so if you look at perry county stark county for example those training rooms it's a it's a decent sized room and there's a countertop you know lining the perimeter and then there's a table in the center and they intentionally wanted that yeah so right there's perry county so you can see the workstations there. So there's one, Dimension two, three, three, what's four, that? five, yeah. six, seven. There's seven or eight spots there. But then there's there's a table there in the center, and that was intentionally <coughs> where they could pull up, you know, gather around if they were working something. What's uh, the square footage on that one? It's probably about the size of this room. Maybe. If they had something this size, they would probably take yeah. one to death and then it's, give them some more. It was an L-shaped cabin out of memory. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to pull the floor plan. And, but right now, what they have to work with is this table. So it's yeah. 24 by... <coughs> so this room is about 26 feet long this way. 24. Oh, this is counting ceiling tiles. I also like the layout that we did up at the PA. It's 24. It's really nice. Six. I guess it's about 22 or 19 feet long. That's 20. You like the space for 20. I think we're good there. So the trail closure size is bigger. 40 could be bigger. The trail closure size is bigger. This one right here for me. I would say that it would go and fit in the function wise and make something. This is a lot larger than what they have. Uh, well, basically that end table <coughs> here cut that in half, and that's what they're working with. Yeah, the other one, and, that, and that's probably more the cubicle that Troy sets and ends about. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's yeah. what that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this this table area. We actually have three, three tables four by four <coughs> that are, are built in because it's an existing building. They just put where the chair put. I almost touched the walls. It, 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 each of those tables are about the row. It's on half the size of what you're all sitting in the front of right now. It's what they want to Not much. What, what, other space, right what other space I would have to have is I would have to have a, a space probably about to have the size of that table by a wall switch so I can put the popcorn machine in there so I don't have a revolution <laughs> against me. Okay, we can handle that. Uh, any need for a dedicated conference room for press hearings or anything like that? I mean, if you wanted to talk about expansion for the future, maybe, but really, we just use our conference room. Okay. And most of the stuff we do right now, we walk outside and do it outside. Typically, we have a conference room between you and the chief in the middle of the Six, eight, ten, maybe at the most. But then there's a secondary conference room. That's <coughs> we put a yes to that. Yes, put a yes to that. The con secondary conference room. And what would the, the secondary conference room square footage wise? Is well, that's what we'd have to have. A 240, well, they have uh, by the, the C6 is 140 and 1300. So the two equally sized conference rooms? Well, I was just trying well, to figure out. The concept out. is so much smaller. And six, eight, ten, main conference room for like. Where I could actually have a whole department meet and bring everybody in. Would the training room serve that purpose? That's what I was wondering when you were going to talk about square footage. Six hundred. Yeah. Thirty six. Thirty six. 
as we go this is just to start with you well i was going to say the conference room the press room uh those all could go and switch over to the training room size uh with that but the 600 foot and maybe closer larger in size we're combining all those there because recently when i've been test driving all the training rooms that we have available to us they all have their kinks of they're wider than they are deep, that, but they're all limited at 28 people to get in there. And we, other than going to Ivy Tech or a college setting, we're running out of size, right. and it would almost behoove us to go larger. Because we we, mo we, mo we don't train individually. We'll, we'll put on individual programs, but we invite surrounding agencies. Madison, Hanover, we invite people guys from Switzerland County. So it's hard to really determine what our group size will be. He's one of our chief training officers, so he can use that too. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need one a training room that has some space. Just taking a stab at ideal if you were to use a desk top 70 75 ish would potentially be better for because we had a training the other day multi-jurisdictional and we had they had 28 desktop seats then we were 35 40 and some of the guys were just standing in the back of the room were pulling in other chairs and that was at the ma office and they were very very well placed. 70 75 people in a training type table setup yeah if we could go and have that room we may not go and put that many if we several of the times they can pull the chairs in and just sit in row sections like this as opposed to the desk taking notes but also when we've looked at bringing in outside trainers because some of the training that i've looked to host and bring here they want a minimum of uh, some of them say 50 seats that have the table in front of them. Some are, have marked down 75, and some have been 100 uh, seats. And they we got turned down trying to just say, hey, using the MA seating and the measurements by saying stadium seating and desk seating, they said your venue's not large enough to come to do that. And I had to go and tell them we do have access at the local colleges to do that, but they were like they turned us down to use us as a hosting site just because of our venue wasn't there. Yeah. So if we size it to accommodate 70, 75 in a lecture style <coughs> table, yeah. instead of being more than enough. And then we've had some just multi jurisdictional meetings where we've had individuals there and we've had 30 plus just come in crammed in rooms half the size of this. Okay. And I can see, I can also see the SROs trying to utilize that when they have some programs that they invite parents in. <coughs> uh, when, we have, when we have done those, we've actually had to go to the college, to Ivy Tech, and utilize one of their uh, classrooms, actually their biggest one, and it was standing room only. I mean, there were people packed in there all in the corners. So okay. it'd be nice to be able to offer that up also. Sure. If we could. Okay. And then off of the training room, kitchenette, need access to public mail, female mail. Uh, we'll do those as unisex like we talked about. Um, ideal for training room to have direct access to the outside to the exterior their, its own entry point after our activities well by definition you've got a lot of traffic going come up the water i'm not trying to run the trees and trees up the yeah i would say something like what ivy tech has in that large training room it, it, it has outdoor entries where you can just, just okay. <coughs> so you know what I'm talking about, Bob? You can come right out. You pull in, in the, the auditorium. Yes. yes, yes, yeah. You go right out. You on can the go sidewalk. right out onto the sidewalk. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I thought it was going on Vigo County. <laughs> anyway, it, it's pretty much what we just talked about. But you can see the 
there's the training room. It has its own dedicated entrance. Um, there's, they're, they're confined right then there to the toilet rooms. It's direct access. Well, the people yeah. do that. They just get up and walk up. So, something, so some kind of concept like that. Yeah. Okay, so for C.25, I'm going to change that to one for training or investigation. Uh, you need to have a supply closet storage area off training area. For the IT or any of the daily cards or anything. Uh, sheriff's office administration, male, female, toilet, yes. Do you want dedicated male and female? Do you want to sex? That's the decent we'll sort of out there. Seems correct, but it's, like I said, janitor's closet. We'll just skip that because we know we're going to have that. Uh, armory, yes. 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 Do you have, Troy actually puts down footage on his diagram. Do we have that here? I want to say it was roughly 450 foot, but that was going to be like the taser storage, the defensive yeah. tactics storage, armory storage, uh, armoring equipment storage. So basically three or four, like 35, 36, 37, uh, the canine storage, those items are all kind of put together in about 450 square foot, I believe, is roughly where he went and shot out. May have been a small one. Yes. 120. Okay. Um, evidence storage? Yes. 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 And the example we like is Decatur County. We absolutely love their evidence. And okay. what, what that, in the way, here's the concept of it, is the officer, there's a wall that has a ledge, and on that ledge will be the plastic wrapping evidence wrap system, and then he can process that. There will be a spot for a laptop, what he can do is for the management of it, enter it in, and then you walk up and the uh, storage cabinets are right there. They open them, put the storage in, or the evidence in, they shut the door, they automatically lock, they can't be opened again, and the evidence tech from the back side can access what the evidence is, pull it out, there'll be a table, he can process it. Now what we really liked about the case County was over on one wall, one wall was totally, <coughs> half was, it was caged with a lock, half was for drug storage, the other half was for firearms. So you, and you could lock them down, sure. and, and it, there was room to actually lay it out. You know, so it's not all jammed together. Okay. So Philip Fountain County is what he just described. Fountain County. Oh. Yeah. So we'll leave it like Fountain County is what he described. Um, captain's office, I assume it's one of the eight. Mm -hmm. uh, K9 office, was that one of the eight? That would go into more along the lines of the armor and taser defensive tactics right. storage area. So is there an office in that space <coughs> or adjacent to it? It would just be the storage of equipment aspect of it. it they would be using their laptop, their station for tracking records, all of that. Well, you saying it was one of the original things that you were anticipating? No. So, that's what so there's an additional canine office function in, cl in close proximity to the armory, taser, defensive, and canine storage area. Any of the equipment that he would need to store would go in that one room. We have a box system uh, in our canine practice, and there are Every bit is the length of the table. The length of the table and about 24 inches. Yeah. Out. So, and, so that's and it has to be kept in a kind of a, a very clean environment, uh, so it doesn't pick up a lot of odors or anything like that. Is a distraction to the dog during his training. So what we're actually talking about is a storage unit. 
for it, independent of anything else. Okay. So dedicated canine storage. Yes. And within that story, is what you're saying, <coughs> an area for a laptop. Well, he would he wouldn't need it because right now we have one canine. So any of his paperwork, storage, documentation, a, a physicality room, or a one of those eight offices, they wouldn't necessarily need that. At that moment. But, but he would have to have a secure area for training aids. Well, and those training aids are drugs. So, you know, they, they have to be locked down in the safe and secure according, you know, to okay. ATF so we get the permission to use that for training. Okay. Uh, CSI, work area, processing lab, okay, storage. And we call that the state rules. Okay. Uh, I mean, we just don't have, our evidence room is probably if it's larger, that's where we will handle all that. Uh, the only thing we really do, Josh, I need let's think about this for a second, is that we do the electronics. We do all those downloads and that type of thing. Uh, now that we do those, we're probably we're one of the few in this area that <coughs> have, to have the capability of doing it now, so we're going to get a lot of other agencies wanting us to start to download their, and this is evidence, so I guess we would just designate an area in the evidence room for that problem. Or so. When we were done with the detective's office, that was where one of those, Yancey was wanting that extra space right. for that designated area in his room to go and do that. Okay. So there won't, might be one detective space that's the same size as our offices. Bumps it bumps out just a little bit so he can have a processing area. I was actually thinking that could be good, too. but maybe not. I mean, it, it makes him have to run back and forth all the time when he does these. And just, yeah, it's a laptop, and you wouldn't want him to go into the no. evidence room where that is, because in no. theory, only when you're transferring them out of the lockers and sticking them on a the shelf. Right. The less people that are in there, the less chain of custody issues you have. <coughs> Break room? Yes. 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 Uh, CID waiting, any of those spaces? I'm assuming you mean criminal investigation? Yes. It's all going to be one that uh, so it's <coughs> accommodated? Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to take the C.51 to zero, all the rest of those to zero. Lactation room, the sheriff administration area. Okay. It, it's not common. I would, I I would say have that. plenty of other rooms that you could use. Yeah, as yeah a I would say so if we could accommodate. You could accommodate, you could accommodate you that. Room. You have <coughs> other, like the, the attorney small, rooms and stuff right. like that. The storage that room. Okay. As long as you have a private yeah, space available, you're that's fine. What we did. In the basement, if, if needed, because we had two women here, it was done. So it was by the side of the elevator, which was three corners. So we just spaced it with the they call it the lactation station. Or yeah, something. as long as you provide a comfortable space, okay, that's have a refrigerator. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, locker rooms, men, women's locker rooms, yes. Uh, IT room, yes. Did you want to comment on size on that? I think what is location? No, I want the location. Okay. I want to put door in and you're there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just, we talked about that. I know. Yeah, I got a question mark about it. I'm going to start. Um, large evidence storage. We, 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 we spoke about this and, and what, Josh? We, we decided that we have it inside the sheriff's building or at some point come back and try to have a secure building later later on and, uh, well 
like a bullhorn or something like that. We don't we don't get a whole lot of large evidence items. Uh, and, and since I start getting a little bit of concern about space uh, inside the facility, my question or, or my thought was, at a later date, I can build something on the outside <coughs> to make it secure for larger items, which, you know, we just don't, I don't know what, two or three times? I'm the only one left from the time we did all search for so I guess two or three times you know, we brought in large items since I've, and I've been here nine years. So, tree stands. Tree stands. Well, we, we usually find places for tree stands, you know, the hallway. That's what but, I mean. Yeah. That's in the hand to we in, yeah. saws and, and chainsaws. The last time we actually ran the pole barn to put all that in. So, I'm going to take a picture of the site. Well, it's going to have to be some kind of building to do that. I don't see why I couldn't, as long as it's secure. So, uh, yeah, hey, you can decide that a good time. But so we can put that on the side just a little bit and discuss it as we go. Okay. It's a possible alternate, but also part of that building might be for long over long right. Right. Okay. Okay. It's kind of over here. That's not good. If you don't see it coming through, you want to put it in the building. Vehicle Sally Port, yes. 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 One bay, two bay. This, now this is all his. So I would say two to three. So you have two large bays, so that way you can have vans or cars on both sides. I want to keep the transport vehicles, like the van, probably two vans, inside the side port at all times. Well, it's two bays, two deep, high doors for both deep. I was going to say, is this the standard? Two large? Two large doors? I would say two large doors. Two feet, 16 foot. That one would look like it's a uh, case of yeah. As long as it's bigger than there. Okay, the county was small. Because you have to think once you get the vehicle in there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but that's a really small indicator. So if you get a van in there and a car on the other side. You said that's decatur. Mm -hmm. You open the door, or if the other officer is trying to open the door, it limps the space. If the back person needs to get out, I think they can't because there's not room to go in between oh, the vehicle or on the side. But they were dealing with it, but actually that's right. It's just not big enough for right. that specific. Yeah, but it would be nice to have two doors so you're not lifting this huge garage door all the time up and down to get this person on this side out for this person person we, having two doors. We've had some difficulty with that when the door just breaks down. It's four hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So five mm -hmm. Well, it's the number. So four doors size to accommodate how many vehicles at one time? The drive I mean, if that was a little bit wider and there were two dedicated mm -hmm. on each side, a total of four doors. I'd say at least four, but room where the back car can get either around or in between to get out. The big complaint is somebody comes in, drops somebody off, and you lock up the bay. Mm -hmm. so and that's what I get out to the right yeah. uh, Our Sally Court is exceptionally small. In the, I mean, we have that problem. We'll have car, car, car. <coughs> And they lock their cars off and they go off. We don't know if they're going to prosecute or we don't know if they're going inside or they're going to dispatch. So there you go. If you're ready to take out, you've got eight prisoners going to Rockport, and there they sit in the transport van. If you put a transport van on one side and it's reasonably appropriately sitting there, mm -hmm. then you've lost the opportunity of that transition around the guy. That's why I'm saying. That's where the third door came in. Uh, <laughs> Because the van is what we use a lot. It sits outside in harsh weather versus having it inside all the time. No one can get around it. No one can touch it because the van's secure all the time. It'll extend the life of the van. Okay. Crap. 
about the delivery of the modules and need questions about the heights and space. We don't, we don't want them in the security. We yeah. want them on the we want drop off where they're going to use this outside. Delivery for supplies like to the kitchen that have a totally different entry point. Right. We don't want them coming through the jail at all. So like today when we got back from lunch, there was a vehicle on the side port, there's cars on the side, there was a car right here, you couldn't even get through here. So a lot of times there'll be us going out with inmates, another county coming in, not including the road officers that are trying to get in to drop off whoever they just arrested. We've got to make sure there's enough room in this sally port to accommodate now and down the road. Because we're building 300 now, but eventually it's going to be bigger, so there, we can have a lot more traffic going in and out. We don't want to build another sally port down the road. We'll take a look at it and accommodate it. Um, Four doors and three lanes wide. I know we put the front of the lanes in order to put it in the middle. Yeah, or, or, or we could put angle parking in too. Yeah. Kind of that third mm -hmm. slot, you have two straight driving bins. Mm -hmm. You know, and then just, it saves us some of the um, Hazard chemical showers, emergency yeah. eye wash station typically put in. Yes. But quite a few. Several places. Like, Someone in Sally Port, the booking, down the hallway, in the inmate confinement area. Because if someone gets exposed to chemical spray and booking, sure. I don't want to have to take them all the way out in Sally yeah. Port or if in the housing block. So, emergency shower and eye wash. Just the eye wash. Emergency shower and eye wash. I didn't take, I'm sorry, to take the Sally Port, mm -hmm. but just the eye wash that those other Throughout conditions. The uh, receiving sally port, yes. Uh, sally port toilet, typically we do that for staff. It's a general arresting officer from the other agency. It's right there. That's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, breathalyzer, yes. Yeah. Temporary evidence storage. Um, yes. This is for your it be for results on. Yeah. Uh, booking counter, yes. Bullpen, seating, male, female. Coming down, I thought that someone was going to sit down, not necessarily like it. Uh, search rooms? Yes. Yes. Uh, inmate toilet? Yes. <coughs> that, typically, we'll do that as a combined toilet and search shower <coughs> area. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Wanted to combine that. Uh, pre screen area? Yes. Uh, photo index area? Yes. yes. Body scanner? Yes. Uh, absolutely. Uh, video arrangement? Yeah. yeah. Interview room? Yes. Yes. How many? One, two. I'd say one. I don't think it has to be quite that good. Yeah, I would agree. Classification officer? Yes. yes. Um, okay, male and female holding cells. Come out of cells? Yeah. I didn't take booking. Mm -hmm. No, this is a padded holding. Padded holding is separate. Right. You want a number? Yeah, what are your thoughts? Now, typically, we would go ahead and double bunk them, realizing it's really only going to use single, but if you ever got the pinch, right. you're good done. That would work. It's a growth area, too. Yes. Yeah, we, we really don't want to come back and add on to what we refer to as your core services. You're going to take a look at your laundry, your kitchen. You want to be so you're talking about four rooms holding two each for male and female? Yes. Okay. I mean, is, do you think that's adequate? I mean, that's a total of eight rooms with a double bunk, but most of the time you're going to use single bunk. Right. Unless you get a pinch. No, I think it would be Because if... 
of the rooms for females is not being used, it can be converted into a male. So it's really just universal right into it. So it yeah. should be. Uh, detox, male and female? Both. Yes. Uh, so how about a, a dirty hold? Versus a <coughs> so, for example, if, if you're getting ready to transport somebody to court, you, there's a, a bullpen area, what we call it, the, the clean bullpen, they're getting ready to go to court, versus a dirty bullpen, somebody coming in. Yeah. Well, we want to call it a transport pool. So, yeah. that's the same concept, yeah. just a transport pool. So, anyone that's getting ready to be out of the facility, they're served, everything's done, and they're waiting in this one room to go out. You need a male and female bowl for that? Yes. And size to accommodate how many? Well, it depends on what we got to transfer. If yeah. we have a port on site or if we have to transfer in and out. I would say at least 20 to 30. Total? Mm -hmm. Well, a piece. Well, right now, we just brought in 10 at one time. And the other day, we brought in 20 moving them around and that's at our current rate. If we're housing 300, possibly more down the road. Yeah. Uh, juvenile hold, like a six hour juvenile hold. You guys discussed that? No, I don't know. I don't know, what do you think? I don't want to do hold. What do you do, what do you do with juvenile hold? Right now, the general health, I don't want to be able to do that at all. She's with the hospital, and I think I do two We can always convert. I would say we have one, actually two of them, one male, one female. Because we're going to get it damaged, you know, we want to harm. Yeah, you have sight sound separation. So, what we've done in the past, Perry County was this place, Hart County was this place. Sally Port, Perry. Well, the area between the intake booking counter and the vehicle Sally Port coming down that hallway before you get to the detox is where we generally put them. They're kind of isolated. They're not often used for juvenile hold. What most people use them for are the inmates that like to kick and scream and pound, and they just drive you nuts. So you put them out the end of the hall so you don't hear them so much. Okay, so we put two, yes. Padded cells. Two. I'd say at least two to three. Two to three. We, we could use three over now. Okay, I'm, I, know they're I was grinning. Two are pretty typical for 150 bucks, you know, right? Yeah, I was grinning when I asked the question because I was expecting. If you want to come over for a couple nights, so you understand what they want for you. Well, they're, 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 they're got four. four. They're trying to get four. Use four or five. Mm -hmm. uh, D25, I think I've got two. average for 150. So what we did is we just paid 40 something to just yeah. for three pad with arms. Was it marathon? Uh, was it marathon the company? Out of Florida. Yeah, yeah, Florida. Probably marathon. But it has flawed designs also. And that's why it's costing repair. It wasn't really done like the first time. So what we've done in the past, what we did in the Stark County, is we built the space for a padded holding, but we didn't actually put the padding in there because it was for future. So you, know, you have the space, you've got the flushable floor drains there, it's, it's there and ready. But I would suggest at least four padded holding. I'm okay with that. <laughs> put the bathroom in the middle and put the pad on either side and you'll have to put the side out the bathroom and then you'll have to put the pad on the Yeah. So you, you have to be in multiples of two to set up like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's what Jack just described is the D126. So there'd be a shared pad between the shower between. Inmate property storage? Yes. yes. Uh, do you want a separate washer and dryer off intake booking? No. So you'll no, use the agree. main jail laundry if you need to, had to. Because mm -hmm. okay. the booking now is housing, unfortunately. 
booking in the new jail is temporary until they're classified and move the population. It won't be a housing anymore. So hopefully we won't run into that. But our laundry room and kitchen will be relatively close to booking. So, and I don't want inmate workers doing laundry around booking. I think it's more of a security. Okay. Uh, in a changing room, a lot of times we'll combine that with the search shower. We'll see how it lays out. I mean, it works where it can. The inmate property storage, 320 square feet. It's not very much. No. I don't want to run out. Uh, how do you guys envision storing inmate property? Back to the back. Guardian system? No, of course. That's what we want when we get our new jail to the back to the back. Like the guardian? Yeah. Like the guardian, guardian equipment? System. Yeah. So we just want to house what will fit in those. Because right now, I have suitcases over there. Yeah. I have one person that looks like they just moved in with like five suitcases, and we don't have any room for that. So when they shrink wrap the Guardian, they shrink it mm -hmm. down, where are we going to put it in? We're going to put it in a tote? We're going to put it in a hanging bag? We thought about the hanging bags to take yeah. up less space. Well, what if I can find pictures for you. What we've typically done in the past is the high density file storage. Um, like if you go to a doctor's office or attorney's office, you see the file cabinets they have the gray yeah. coming mm -hmm. yeah. where you get yeah. packed. You can, yeah. A lot of times we'll use those for inmate property storage. Yeah. I and work, I work from a place to have them. Yeah. Would something like that work? Yeah, I'm just worried about the size. Well, I agree. I think it's too small. Yeah. So what we will do is we will actually lay the room out with the shelving in it. So that's why I'm asking how you plan to store it because that will help dictate the size of the room. So we'll definitely take a look at that. You know, hell, I'm tired when the don't be right to clean the clothes. Put the racks and rotate things just like dry food. Oh. And make 12. Put them all back and ready to go. Well, I was just thinking one of those systems, it was simply an alphabetical type of system would be uh, just like last name and you you know that all the r's doesn't matter when they came in their storage is right there so you can just roll them back and, and get right to it as opposed to that you know what i'm saying right. look at each one yeah. uh jail clothing issue you're gonna need some storage for inmate Uniforms, right. shoes, all that stuff. I don't know if it would be a thousand square feet. No. It may changing room, which we already talked about that. Uh, inmate shower. We've done it both ways where it's dedicated and sometimes it's shared with the search shower between the two padded holdings. I, I would recommend you have it dedicated if you're not sharing it between the two padded holdings. Yeah, because right now it needs to be hooked up with the lice spray, the de-licer and stuff like that. And I don't want shower. people to have to go and turn it off or forget to turn it back on. One shower where they go, one shower before they go to the general population or into the tent cells. Yeah. And that way the solutions are already in there and ready to go. Right. So fill up like Huntington County. Uh, storage, yes, we're going to have storage. Uh, <coughs> transport officer, yes. Uh, transport holding, yes. and we talked about that above D223. Uh, transport sally port, so yes, there will be an interlock between the transport hold and the vehicle sally port. Mm -hmm. uh, January, yes, we will. Uh, we've sort of talked about this um, previously, the professional non-contact visitation. Um, and I think what we said, we say two. Uh, 
consider it, look at it? This is for like attorneys, no yeah. contact. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jail Commander's office. Yes. Put him out over. Yeah. Matron office. No. Change that to uh, the captain in the jail's office. Our man, our matron does the. Uh, so it's sex sex in the so we've already made her an office. Okay. So change matron to captain. Yes. yes. Lieutenant's office. Yes. To hold two people. Yes. Uh, mailboxes for the jail side, jail administration. Yes. So we need two separate sheriff administration and jail administration mailbox area. I mean, some do some of I'm mailbox in the car. I'm just, uh, cubbies. Yeah, cubbies. cubbies. Yeah, kind of like the slide okay. boxes you yeah. see. Uh, agency office, in other words, if you have Indiana State Police or DNR, do you want a place for them to land where they can do some work if they're in the area? This one, yeah. yeah. So do, what about the jail supervisors? Well, uh, yeah, I'm, we'll have to revisit a part of that in just a minute. Going back to the sheriff's side, because I'm, I'm going to have a task force for our drug task force people okay. in this county and what surrounding county. I'm going to have an office space for them. So is that part of the? It would be part of the sheriff's office. Is it part of the gate? Uh, no, you know that. Yes, okay. and that would that that would have to be a fair sized office. Almost, almost like a. Uh, a small for the A small wheel. Multi. Multi people training room. Is that C? We're talking section C. Yeah, I need to. Uh, 12, 15, I think is on that. Just, it goes back and forth. It, it, it's, uh, it's the state police, it's the prosecutor's office, sheriff's department, well, three, four sheriff's departments, and at least one individual. And, huh? What happened to the current one? President? They repurposed it back. They took it. that back. They're actually somewhere else. But I, I made an offer to them to come in and give them an office space. So, so about how big? Uh, he gave me that room. He gave me the number. They say room. Room. this room size. So yeah, probably. probably. That's 24 by 18. Yeah. And Jasper, you said jail supervisor. Yeah, we skipped that because the two people was for the lieutenant's office, right? Yeah, and two people for the jail supervisors, which will be the shift sergeants. So when we say two people, it's two people sharing one office. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be maybe not the, so if they was in there together, they'd have their desk, their space. I don't want to provide an outside agency and office, not people who are working there all the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we will have dedicated staff toilet kettle. Okay. Like an outside kettle? Yeah. Uh, tool and maintenance, yes. And storage, yes. Yeah. Okay, now we're moving over to secure housing in the population area. Uh, housing control room. Is that where it's inside the block? Yes. No. Master control, yes. Yes. Uh, toilet staff, yes. Uh, dormitory trustee, you don't want dormitory, right? No. Okay, so let's not put that down. General Pop. Uh, general Population Unit. Do you want any <coughs> single bed cells? I do, but I don't know if I want it in general population. You want a bed. 
medical sag area. Okay, so the medical sag is coming up, so let's move down to the zero. Um, general population, double bunk. I would prefer more two than anything else. Two bed cells. Yeah. So looking at eight point seven. Two beds, two beds per cell. So, and we'll have to confirm, double check the math on this. But 35 double above the yield to 70 as maximum security. I got you, Bobby. Sorry. Sorry. I can hear you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So uh, double bond. Yeah. 35 okay. cells will yield you 70 rated beds okay. for maximum security. Does that sound about right? Thank you, sir. So, seven, two cell beds, and you said about 70, that's for maximum security? Yeah, so double bunk, 35 cells, will give you 70 rated beds for max. Do you need that many for max? It's half my jail right now. Okay. That could be a max plus some. Okay. Depending on their classification. Yeah. So, as opposed to going through, and I already know that you want the dormitory, you want all double bond. Right? So, go for that. The problem with, the problem with four man, six man, eight man cells is when they start tearing stuff up, it's hard to pinpoint who it is, and it's hard for classifications when you have so many people on block. The less people, the less problems. If there's two people in a block, it's easy to figure out who done it, or usually they keep each other more calm because it's easier to find out who done it. Four man's more manageable, but it's still not as great, especially for classifications or if there's a problem moving people around because now you have to move a couple people versus just one. So the less people, better. So if we, for now, start off with double bunked cells, What's the maximum number you would want in a housing pile in a day room? Ideal, <laughs> 10 to 15. Realistically, no more than 25. Take 24. 24. Because they're 24, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I don't really like that number. Because when you have a wheel system, if a fight breaks out in there, how many people am I going to have to go in there to break that up? I don't have the people now to do that. Hopefully, I'll have it here, but just in case some don't. Okay. Let me go ahead and go backwards and ask how many classifications he wants to figure out how to break it up. Right. So, did you hear what Jack no. said? He turned away. Uh, you can go ahead and find another direction how many different classifications do you want once you establish that the type of numbers that are going to work for the classification. We have low, medium, and high. We have three different classifications. But just because someone's classified as low doesn't mean that we won't fight and start a riot. Sure. So we've redone our classifications, which has decreased our fights and problems. Still, the more people you have, the more chance of problems to have. I really would like to you know, more than think in terms of pre-trial, post-trial, felony, misdemeanor, pre-trial, all that kind of stuff. You guys got three, most of you in terms of eight. Yeah. So. In the, okay, so in the state jail standards, you have to have a one to 12 uh, ratio, shower ratio. Right. So if you have a maximum of 24 inmates per housing pod, that's two showers. Um, is it preferred to have showers in the cells, or would you prefer to have no showers in the cells? You have a game shower accessible off the day room. <coughs> the off the day room, because then if each cell has their own shower, it's it's more dangerous for them inside there versus being outside. So like Cater County, their showers was outside. So if it's still on camera, they're gonna win the shower. It's definitely safer to have them outside. She's got Cater pulled up there. Yeah. 
Okay. So I like I like that aspect of it. I didn't like how it stuck out like that in the middle. But if you put those in their individual cells, then the more things they can flood the whole place with. Well, it's more out there. It's more expensive to put them in the cells. Oh yeah. You just quadruple the mm -hmm. amount of sanitary, domestic water. Mm -hmm. The less things they have in the cell, the mess up the best. Yeah. The only downside is the wet. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of jumping around here because okay. I'm asking the questions because it's going to lead to I think, enough information for us to get started. Just to, to begin with, because we know we're shooting for 300, you know, total rated bed capacity, which includes everything except detox and pedal. So let's talk about program classrooms um, and rec spaces. Well, rec spaces, I don't want just one. These are the concept. So can you, yeah. do you have a wheel? Okay. So instead of having one big rec yard where I have to take, or an officer has to take 24 or however many from this side to this side, I would like at least one, two, three, four. So Philip, can you go to a Vigo? The less the officer has to move with the person, you're better. You're, you're answering the questions I wanted to, yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. So, if the, sorry. So, for example, in these housing pod areas, you can see that there's you know rec areas off of here in the program classrooms. Uh, for each housing area, but you're saying that you don't need that you'd like to have even more. So. If this was a rec yard here, yeah. this block would go here. They can access the door. The officer didn't have to go in. Control opens the door, they go into rec. When they get done, they go back. Okay. And this block goes in. Okay. So this block would go to this rec yard, this block would go to that one. So the officer take one that never has to encounter them at all. So Philip, can you put down as a note reminder for us Vandenberg County? You guys been to Vandenberg? Mm -hmm. That's where Vandenberg is. Have you been there, Jack? No, there's a show uh, I studied for the Allen Commissioners in Michigan that had that same concept. But the direct area was indoor outdoor, but it was accessible as a chunk on the outside of the block itself with two different day rooms. Yeah. So I could sit there and make a book that way, like that way. Right. And, and this, in this version, area. multiple blocks could be at wreck at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take it one step further. A lot of times, because you're, you, you hit the nail on the head, it's either you're escorting inmates to the services or you're bringing the services to the inmates. So mm -hmm. let's carry it a step further. In addition to the indoor outdoor rec, program classrooms. Oftentimes we see program classrooms where it's shared between two housing lots, mm -hmm. for example. Um, same could be said for medical, so that you're not escorting inmates all the way down to your medical office. Oftentimes we'll just build in a very nice small, you know, 10 by 10, 10 by 12, just a medical exam if they have to come down and deliver some meds or something they need the band aid. Or well, that's what we have here, actually yeah. two medical rooms. Just a small exam room, so they don't have to go all the way to booking to see the nurse. The nurse comes down here, we get them the shortest distance we have to move them as possible. It doesn't have to be as louder as her office with her records. Right. She takes her clipboard, yeah. there's an exam room. Yeah. Okay. So, as much as reasonable, bringing the services to the inmates as opposed to escorting the inmates yes. to the services. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you need uh, any isolation or seg cells? Yes. And how many would you like to have? A lot of times they take booking. 
it serves that purpose. Yeah. And the problem with that is when they're in booking, they're allowed <coughs> to people that are going through immediately getting arrested, and that's where usually a lot of problems start. Because that's we kind of have it now, and every time someone comes in, they're yelling and screaming, they're talking. I think it needs to be between booking and the general population. Because if you leave them in general population, because you have one man cell, then they're either getting picked on or screamed at, and it causes a whole other issue. They need to be separate from general population, where they're not getting picked on, and they need to be out of booking, because it's booking time. Yeah. So somewhere between the two. Yes. And how many, <coughs> how many beds would you take? I would say they need to be single, I agree. single inmate. Six beds, eight beds. At least, I would say with the population that the jail's going to have and possibly have more in the future, 10. Okay. Now, I'm not thinking of these as, I'm almost trying to decrease your number, I'm just letting you know. I'm not seeing these as your medical sex cells. Yeah. These are these are disciplinary yep. sex cells. Yep. Yep. Which, they can be, you open a door, there's actually one shower. Because there's only 10, 10 inmates. Right. One shower, they're isolated. You let them out, they shower, then they go back. So we wouldn't have to have a shower for each. There's one shower in, in this little area, okay. but they're all locked down, but they're totally separate from yeah. everywhere else. So they, yeah. so they have their own dedicated day room or sub day room. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So essentially, the conversation that we just had. Uh, answers the rest of page five, with the exception of uh, inmate worker, and I know it says dormitory, I know you know it, but your trustees, your inmate workers, how big of a housing problem? Because <coughs> I know that you've said you don't want them back in general pop. Okay. It definitely isn't going to be 20 beds, actually. And what would, what, what would the inmate workers, their dormitory setting or whatever you want to call it, we would like it to be in the same area as the kitchen and the laundry, mm -hmm. almost if you just walk across the hallway. <coughs> Is dormitory style okay for trustees? Well, I'm leaving that to you. For, for them, it's okay. I don't, this honor dormitory, yeah. that doesn't exist in the jail. Okay. So, the inmate worker dormitory, that'd be fine. It doesn't need to be 20, because what I would like to have, that for males majority, I want to have the option, if it comes down the road, for have female inmate workers. That's my next question. It wouldn't be right, it doesn't have to be as big, but I want to have an option, so if it occurs down the road, we have it. Right. Okay. And in the meantime, you can still use it for housing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, Ten and six. Ten, six seven, yeah. Ten males, six female. Dormitory is okay. Because for with what we're looking at here and the less movement being closer, we won't need as many running around and trying to do things. Right. Okay. Okay. So that the conversation we just had answers the rest of page five. Uh, and again, professional non-contact visitation. This is just on this one jail side, we've already talked about that, as well as janitorial and storage. Uh, medical, nurse, yeah. yes. Um, for the jail administration, the jail side, the jail staff, dedicated staff break locker area. Well, I don't think a locker area, because that's going to be shared with the sheriff's office. Side, isn't it? If we can work it in there, yes. But I think just a break area so they can, if they want to eat their lunch, a, a refrigerator. Yeah. I don't eat out of the kitchen. I wouldn't store my stuff in there. You know, I don't expect the jail staff either. They okay. just have somewhere local. Okay. So no locker, the staff room. <coughs> I think we're wanting a locker room for the sheriff's office, but I think the jail staff and sheriff's department are going to share that. Okay. Would you want to put like little something about like the mailbox slots for them if they wanted to bring in their purse wallet. 
confident in carrying with them that they will have to get into the party. Yeah, because well, when I think of mailboxes, I'm thinking something kind of big that can put stuff in, not, you know. Okay, so, that's a good point for having this conversation. So mailboxes, typically, they're like size like this, what we yeah. have. Yeah. And I think what you guys are saying for emails, you know, purse <coughs> storage, or cell phones, or something like that, you may want some area on the jail side to lock that stuff up, not necessarily back at the shared locker rooms. So, that one here, yeah. I'm thinking something like when you go to a holiday world, or like the 12 by 12, mm -hmm. 12 by 12, right. with the key, yeah. Yeah, something that's sort of like, like a backpack. Yeah, like right kind of right of yeah. that a little smaller than that, but you may not want to carry your wallet or mm -hmm. car keys or anything on the floor, and you may just a half dozen or something of those. Yes. So Huntington County, we're just finishing. For example, in their break room on the jail, on the jail side. There's some 12 by 12 lockers just right there in the break room. So, thanks to we'll see. I'm sorry. I, I, they need somewhere to put their stuff to lock it yeah. up. So. Okay. Um, interview, we talked about that. Sound board. Okay, so let me ask you. Let me ask you this. <laughs> I'm going to actually flip back on you. I'm going back in Facebook. Can we talk about, it's on page four, image release. What's the philosophy, thoughts on, do they get released back to the public lobby, or a door directly to the exterior? I don't want them going through the sheriff's and admin side. So just like everywhere else, as little movement and steps as possible to get them out of the building. Currently, they came and come in through a, a door that uh, puts them just outside the lobby into the entry hall, into the sheriff's department. That little hallway there, there's a door that they come out through. And just, I, would, I would like a door for designated for releases so they can go out and that's, a, that's the only thing that door's for is to release someone out, but big enough where they're, say there's a phone out there, so if they don't have a ride, they can call, say, hey, I'm here, I need a ride, but that's the only thing that door's for. I agree. And each release on the public side, where the public parking is, and I agree with the hands at the telephone, small little bench there for them to sit on and wait for a ride if they need to. Okay. I agree. I I personally don't like it when inmates are released back to the but, but big enough that if, if the weather's bad, I mean, they can stay in right. and wait and see out. Yes. So. Okay. I would uh, say a one-way door. Once you go out, you can't back. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, they don't want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to buy it back either. Yeah. I forgot to Okay, medical area. Um, Waiting area, small waiting area. Yes. Where there may be like a medical office and medical exams right mm -hmm. off of that. Yeah. But we need a dedicated medical office. We don't want that shared with medical exam. No. Okay. Agree. <coughs> um, and holding cells. So medical seg. Yes. Single bunk. That wouldn't. Well, these would these would need to be individual cells with negative airflow. Because, I mean, at least two of them. But with the population, the size it's going to be and what it be in the future, I would say more than just two with negative airflow. What would be your recommendation? Four. What's this? Keeping in mind that. So if you have a disease that's going to be catched by someone else. Just a flu. Gotcha. Now, at the same time, your intake booking area, we will always design that with negative air pressure. Because they're just fresh off the street, you never know. So you can use that as a medical setting area if you had to. Okay. Okay. So, single bunk. But I, I want that as close to the medical as possible. So when they when the nurse goes and checks on them, 
she just walks up to the office and it's as close as possible. Uh, <coughs> the only thing with her sales, I would like for her to be able to talk to them in a better way. Most times they have to talk through the door. There needs to be a direct intercom system with them and their booking instead of talking through a door. So right now, the inmates, the way they talk, they, they hit the intercom, it goes to control, yeah. control tells this person. The nurse really needs to be able to see them and push a button and actually talk back. So two-way communication yes. through the push to talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, Philip, can you go to uh, Vigo real quick? Just sit there in medical sec, I don't want that door open. So the purple area here, <coughs> yeah, so you kind of scroll up a little bit. So <coughs> that's the 500 bed facility, that's your medical area. But you see the interlock right here? If you scroll up, you know it's directly accessible off of the intake booking area. Mm -hmm. Typically, like that concept, because if you're bringing somebody in, I mean, first of all, if they're that bad and you go to the hospital, you're not going to come here to the hospital. Right. That, there's typically a close connection, um, correlation between the two. Uh, exam rooms. Do you really need to? Exam rooms? Uh, no, she, she's just going to do one at a time. So I'd rather have one in booking and one closer to inmate housing. So there'd technically be two exam rooms in two different locations. Yes. And that's what we talked about as far as the services. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, the, okay. So there will be two, but one at med and one at Jim Medical records, yes. Yes. Pharmacy. Yes. Not, not a pharmacy per se, but somewhere that medication can be locked up back to what it is now. Yes. <coughs> and yeah. So, so we yes. typically always have cameras on that door. Also yeah. have a card access system. That logger can know who access that room. Yeah. Okay. And sorry, this. Uh, nurse's office. Yes. Visiting doctor's office? No, they can just the nurse's office. Okay. Counselor's office? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Need one? Just one. Um, what other type of laboratory? No, we don't do any labs. X ray? No. Film? No. Um, how about a staff toilet at medical? Yes. Inmate toilet, yes. yes. Uh, you guys are doing any, any dental? Um, we use mobile, so just enough for the nurse's office or the exam room and booking has to be big enough to accommodate the mobile equipment coming in. And same for by population. So if we bring in the mobile x ray or the dentist, they can go down closer to booking or general population, pull their equipment in there, the exam table, bring the inmate out. So both rooms would just have to accommodate mobile equipment. <coughs> both exam rooms. Yeah. Storage, no. Janitorial, yes. Uh, we talked about infirmary. That's where we get really the holding cells. <coughs> uh, medical cells, we talked about that. That's the the four total that we marked above. Yep, two. Padded cell. Do you want a padded cell at medical? Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be as elaborate. So, I don't know, when I had the cells like what we have now, it's a really thick. Right. There's also a coating that you can actually spray onto the metal that makes it a little safer. So, 
there needs to be a room something like that for her, but it doesn't have to quite be a padded cell. There's a rubber coating you can spray. So a room, no metal bunk, maybe something like a plastic boat that can go in there um, with a special coating, but it doesn't have to be a traditional padded cell. <coughs> okay. okay. And when we get into, are you familiar with Norix? Mm -hmm. Uh, like their tenda bed, space saver model, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. I recommend. And we'll have to talk more about this coding. Just make sure what you're talking about. So, padded cell, yes, but not padded. I guess the coding <laughs> you think of it as bringing a truck bed liner. Okay, it's so I'm laughing like because you described a product that I, I do the same way I did. Is it like the polyurea coating, like it's on logs or still cell? Yes. Okay. It's Sherwin Williams product. Okay. <coughs> it just takes the sharp edges. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, padded cell, toilet, shower. I'm assuming yes. Probably off of treat, treat it like a padded. Yeah. Let's move into possible. Uh, suicide launch? <coughs> well, that's what the padded cells are used for now, the suicide launch. So this is double enough. That's really the only reason we put them in there. Okay. Uh, image showers. So in this medical area, I think what I envision is some shower area. In case the nurse needs it for female reasons or male reasons. That way they don't have to go Going through all booking or jail just right there. Yeah. It's a little step plus, I agree. Uh, contaminated laundry. So somebody soils himself in that. <coughs> Very similar to the question I asked, but um, take booking. I think for this, yes, because if someone has lice or something that can catch easy, I don't want it done where all the inmates could possibly catch it. So it would be a good idea. Um, so video visitation. Oftentimes we'll, we're still in the medical area, but oftentimes we'll do the mobile. Mm -hmm. Is that adequate for medical area? Video visitation? Are we talking about counseling? No. Or why would we have video visitation in medical? So, um, yeah. So somebody counseling. So if a medical professional needs to do evaluations. Or loved one. Yeah. I mean, we can always yeah later. And and do you guys envision the stationary bit of visitation consoles? Or do you envision using tablets? We would like tablets, and we looked at a company that can provide it, which would make it easier all the way around. That's where we'd like to go. Most are going tablets, yeah. But even if we have a tablet with the same company, we'd at least want one or two in the block in case something happens to the tablet. So they run off the secure Wi Fi network. If that goes down, we want to have a backup. Okay. So you want some stationary video visitation yeah. consoles back in general population. The intent, use tablets. Mm -hmm. Even if it's capable of having it, if the because right now they're just big monitors that actually come off the wall fairly easy. As long as we can put it on there without having to do structural changes, like put the outlet there, run wires, as long as it's capable of having it. Shared functionality from different houses.
housing, day rooms for the chair. And I know most of them have the garage door kind of lifts up at the top. Um, as long as it was high enough, they really couldn't get to it. It's like Cater County had a fall when they built theirs. There's now a landing where people can actually jump up and get up to that door. Yeah, because they have their inmate toilet shower yes. underneath. So either a door or something permanent closer to the top, like a skylight we can open. We just don't want it where they can get to it in any way. Agreed. We will not put something under the windows. And no drop ceiling tile under here. I agree. <laughs> we have a vision common between either day or company. That's part of the cell itself with the lock, so to speak, as opposed to an outcropping building at that point. I'm just trying to think of the square footage differential. We have to make the outside walls much bigger to accommodate that even a wreck. It would better be over putting the outcropping on here. The outcropping they know doesn't like it from the architect. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Because there's only so much square footage around the wagon wheel, mm -hmm. for example. And can I throw out a concept here? Because it's on my mind. Sure. When we went to the cater, uh, the construction manager was walking around with us and I was talking about in, in between the walls, we talked about three foot, all the mechanicals and oh, behind the cells. Behind the cells, in which they have, it, it's tight. It's tight. He talked about some of these pipes that come down. They actually were sticking out this way. And he said, actually, if we thought about it, we could have turned them to the side. Put a 90 degree. Yeah. There. And actually <coughs> given an extra four to six inches. Yeah. So could you go to Perry County or Stark County? I had some friend or chase photographs. Uh, Perry's about five feet. And I think Stark is just a little bit wider. So typically what we do on our drawings is we do a little graphic. We put them on a mechanical plumbing drawings where we give them 18 inch. We say from the back of the cell, you have 18 inches. Get all your utility. Way a bit wider than what it was. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so uh, this is yeah, you can get a two-pairs or two-pairs section in the chase. There. Where there. All right, yeah, two two two. Two. So that's the period county. Chase that the caper I had to yeah. ask sideways. More than I might could go like this. I we like this. them wide enough yeah. that you can get a cart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that adds on to your square footage. I'm sorry? It adds to your square footage. It does, yes. It's not your expensive square footage, but it is square footage, yes. But you never have to take an inmate out and sell them doing that. Yeah, right. So you have very so less hands on to me. No, I like, I'm, I'm just, just thinking about the what the cops say. That aspect. Yeah. Okay. But like Jack said, you get two, I mean, you would over get only six foot either. But. Um, okay, so indoor outdoor wreck, we talked about that. Um, program area, program classrooms. Yes. Yeah. Now again, those up in Michigan, north of Detroit, they had a real small, not real small, but perhaps an eight or ten person conference room. Well, I, I, have, I, I, have, I, have, I have a revival church, religious revival going on at this moment in that jail. How many people we have? This, how, how many in the mail? It's always bigger. About 30. Yeah, about 30, so. Inmates, and about 25 of their church, of church group. They're, they're plus all their equipment, because they bring in bands and all that. Uh, so I need a space big enough to do those kind of uh, programs. Because like right now, we're doing a rec room, so that means two weekends in a row, nobody gets rec. Because they run it three days. So, well, three Friday, days. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. It's inherited. It's not going to continue. It, it'll be cut down. But right now, it's what I'm, I'm dealing with what I have given to me. Uh, but I do need, plus, you know, we do the 
Okay. They don't call it GED anymore. We do those programs at the school. Yeah. I have church groups that come in. Ron here can tell you. It, it just, I mean, there has to be a little bit of room to spread out where they can breathe. Yeah, well, we have life screens, which treats one part. Then we have REC group that comes in. Sometimes they come in at the same time. So, and they're talking about different subjects. One's faith-based, one's battle and addiction. So we definitely need room where multiple things can go on at the same right. time. And we don't want them in between the rec yards or in a rec yard because it just ties stuff up and it gives them more room to move around and cause mischief. So we want to accommodate a good size but not too big. So you have some gifts that a small room at each day room. Aside from that kind of room, where do you get the limited people doing GED or you know, AA? Or well, we actually use the rec room for that. Mm -hmm. so we use the rec room for that. That's our catch all so, so you're asking for a larger room to accommodate? I'm going to say 50, 60 people? That, that, that we're going to need two classrooms. I don't know, 50, 60, no, no, no. I mean, that, that's too big, but uh, I don't know, 30, 25 to 30. So would you ever mix housing pots? Yes. So in other words, if we said the maximum size for housing pots is 24, mm -hmm. most people say, I'll never mix a housing pot. There'll only be one <coughs> out of the pot in there at a time. So in other words, the largest population you'd, you'd ever have in the program class would be 24 plus the instructor. So that's why I was asking. Yeah, that'd be okay. Well, it sounds like if there's a low and a medium, if they're classified, one's classified at low, one's classified at medium, they can go in together to the classroom. As long as like our computer now, if they've ever had a problem with each other, then they can't go. They can go for the classroom part. The problem with housing them together, when they're living together, is the low will usually get picked on because the medium has more experience because of his charges, so he's going to pick on the low person. Sure. Same thing for the high. Usually in the classroom setting, they're not there that long. They do their class and they go back. Um, now, if they're classified as high, usually we won't put them. Like No, no one classified as high is in the church group this weekend. Too much of a security risk. They would not go into any classroom with lower levels. But low and medium usually is not a problem as long as there's nothing stated. I can't be with person A because he stole something from me. And the same thing goes with if they're too low classifications. He could have stole something from me, I can't be housed with him. And that's why we need room to move people around. Okay. So, 30 people? I would say roughly. Well, 24, because there's not going to be a whole block there. <coughs> so, I mean, two program size for 24. Yeah. yeah. Because what we can do is if we have two good sized rooms, we can cut it down and say, okay, well, this room will hold this many, you can come this day, this day, and this day, and split it up. Uh, any need for a program office? I don't know. Program storage, I would suggest. I would say program storage. I, would, I wouldn't say an office, but a table or a desk in the, the room. Sure. Just so they can set stuff down. Sure. Even if it's a portable desk. Yeah. Program storage, one for each program classroom. Mm -hmm. So let's say two. I want the need to square feet. Mm -hmm. Uh, program in a toilet. So, yes. Unless you want to walk them back and forth mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. So we're going to say two, one for each. Uh, program holding cell. If they get that rowdy, they're going back. They're, they're going back in. Yeah. yeah. So, law library, no. Mm -hmm. Janitorial, no. Well, we're going to get janitorial. Right. We're going to just get that. Uh, employee entrance. Yes. Yes. We already talked about locker rooms, male and female, uh, transgender. Do 
do you or how do you want to address that? So, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, so if we have a male locker room, female locker room, <laughs> what we have done before is just make a small locker room that's labeled you. You have the male, you have the female, and you have do that male, female, and then some small locker room that if we come fall into that, we have something. You don't agree, Jack? You know, I'm just a dirty old construction guy for another long time. Well, I guess we'll just have to put it well, Let me ask you this. Could you know, that be bullshit? But you're talking to a guy who got sued seven uh, times last uh, year. Uh, could that space potentially serve dual purpose with lactation? It could. Mm -hmm. If it's single occupant, yeah. has a lock on the door. Sure. I would say yes. Well, typically part of locker room or something. We want we yes, we want a space that we can put a little bit of equipment in <coughs> and give them an opportunity to work out. It's not gonna be any kind of super fancy type of deal, but a space where we've talked about some you know, more equipment that we can get to put in there for them. Because we are going to have people who, instead of going to Planet Fitness, working out, and trying to get to work, now they're rushing to work, they, we, we think we will have people who will go in there and do it, just before work, or just after work. To, to have on site for healthcare yes. benefits. Well, it wouldn't be just for jail. It would be a general area for room staffies and jail staff. Yeah, staff. Okay. And um, if it could be in proximity, potentially to the training room area, due to the fact of uh, if we put out foldable mats or if the flooring was matted, where we could do defensive training. Yeah, well, this one's got 1,200 square foot right there. So it was well, I think the way they did it at Decatur, if you look up there, I mean, they had, it's just, it was kind of like this. It may not have been straight across, but you had men's locker, one women's locker, and then you had a fitness kind of slash training room right there in between with access from each and and That's just from my memory. That's sure. Okay. Uh, so the break room we already talked about Bobby about the sheriff and very, very uh, I got the concept. I got finished with the big set. Okay. Laundry, washer, and dryer, yes. Now, this is also one of the areas that we're always designed for future expansion. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, we thought about that. So, we definitely want the room big enough where whatever inmate workers working in there can be secured in there and wash their clothes, enough room for them to get the fold, all the old uniforms. Um, What's funny is when we struck him up real nice and neat and then he's standing. Six months later, he's looking for the mop. I mean, there's soap on the floor. Well, I, I want the washer and dryer, the laundry room, connected to the kitchen. With the door connecting the two. So if I have inmate workers in the kitchen, in the laundry room, they can be locked in those two rooms because they can pass the room. They can go in between those two rooms. So, inmate bathroom in the kitchen, which can be accessed from the laundry room. So if they're doing laundry in there, the other inmate workers, if they're gonna help, can go in there, but they can stay in those two rooms and work most of the day. 
cross hall? What? The laundry room? No. Because then they make requests go cross hall. Well, I can lock them in and they don't have to be in the hallway at all. You're going to lock them in? Yeah. You're going to lock them in the kitchen and in the laundry room? Yeah. So that's for trustee. Okay. We don't have trustees, we have inmate workers. Good. If I have a problem or a fight, I don't want them to be able to get out. But I want their work to continue. What they're doing in the kitchen, what they're doing in the laundry room. Okay. Um, housekeeping room. Just so you just like a storage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, inmate toilet, we just talked about mm -hmm. that being really, it's the one in the kitchen, but that they have access to it from both your side. Yeah. Gentro, yes, cart storage. You're going to want some cart storage, but it'll be yeah. built into the laundry. So I'm just going to say yes and a reminder for us. I think it's heated that makes the cart walk through the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are big heated carts with it so the food stays warm usually. Yeah. But they have to, we don't want them down at the other end and they can feed it. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. <coughs> Your inmate workers that are locked in the kitchen and laundry working, mm -hmm. I would suggest that we have some small area where they can go and eat in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Food service, manager's office, yes. food prep. A lot of this we don't really need to go through because you're going to get it all by default as far as the food prep, cooking area, dry storage, walking cooler. Food. Yes, we understand all that. Dishwashing, cart wash, cart of storage. storage. Side of those things that put them all off the board. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, you're getting all that by default. Uh, the cart wash is important right now, but they have to go through booking into our salad board. So we want them to be able to be self-sufficient in that one room. In, in that one room. So in the kitchen and laundry room. Kitchen. So like the cart wash, like the one we're talking about like the food carts. Yes. I want them to be able to do that in the kitchen and not be come to the salad board. Uh, oh absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Sorry, I wasn't following. That's a key just more or less localizing it to the laundry food service area. So, right. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you envision a separate trash room? A separate what? Trash room? Or just having a dumpster through an interlock off the kitchen. Something secure where they can do it, kind of what hospitals do, where you're not actually not leaving the building to throw the trash. Because right now, our inmate workers have to go outside. Cool. 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 <coughs> well, on a continuing basis, post each meal with a food trash outside, we're going to have a holding area in the building for some duration. No, so I'll, there needs to be an area in the kitchen area to throw away the trash all time into the dumpster. So the dumpster is actually connected to the building. The inmate workers go, the kitchen worker unlocks it, the trash goes in, it closes back. So the inmate worker never has to go outside to take the trash out. Never have to leave the building. And loading dock? Towards the back, around the kitchen. So all supplies for the kitchen is all in that one area. Kitchen supplies, cleaning supplies are never brought in anywhere else. Brought to the kitchen, there's some holding and storage back there. They're full blown loading dock. It doesn't have to be a big loading dock. They can just pull up and there'd be just a bigger door. It doesn't have to be like a semi back step into it. Use, uh, some black pump, some ice, some loading food stuff as a general rule. Power to the, All of them. the ones that do now, because that's what they have to do, they just take through a side door. Okay, so you don't really need a dock. No, no. Just, like, yeah, just, a, just a door that will open big enough so when they 
bring their carts and stuff in and like pallets of food. It doesn't have to be like a traditional semi loading dock. <coughs> Yeah. Scott, make a trash compactor dump right in the dumpster. You wouldn't have to open anything. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. You wouldn't have any doors and any doors or anything. And an opening small enough for person I don't think it would be in there. Mm -hmm. That's even a bit cross. Sorry, that's your love. I'm just keeping you through the dumpster. Not a good idea. So a, a traditional loading dock is not required. No. So just aggregate, truck will back, back up, drop a ramp, the wheel of yeah. the product down, and then it'll yeah. aggregate. Uh, talk briefly about commissary. I assume commissary deliveries will come in the same as your dry food storage that type of thing, yeah. kitchen. You envision the commissary being near the kitchen. How do you how do you envision distributing commissary? Who's going to package so, it and just distribute it? We want to basically have our own little store in there. So one person designated to monitor this room, which will look almost like a great, you know, have cold, dry. That person would organize it. Okay. So we want to do our own in-house commissary. The room big enough. We, we currently room. contract out, but our thought is we would like to. So a room with some shelving mm -hmm. where you can place product, mm -hmm. and probably a table where you can sort and package, mm -hmm. and then a, a cart where you can wheel it to the inmates and in distribute it. Well. So, and the, the person that you're saying is so responsible for maintaining, yes. keeping track of all this, mm -hmm. who is that person? Well, it would just be a designated person at the time. I mean, is it? It should be like staff. a short word. Yeah, just a staff member. So does this staff member already have a workstation, work area? So do they exist now? Yes. No. Well, no, I'm sorry. What we've talked about today. Yeah. They, well, they would need something in the commissary room. Okay. Like an office key files and stuff like that. So they need something in there. Because that would be their primary job is to organize that. They basically would be a store clerk with inside. I'm sure they keep it that way. Well, by, we do that now. And in the commissary has came box knives, Things that are not supposed to be in there and contraband. So it's not a secure way when we can do it in house and it's going to be 100% secure. Point. Plus, there's the cost factor. We're actually going to save money by doing it ourselves. Even hiring the one person to do it, we're going to be saving money. What is the schedule? How many times a day? Once? Mm -hmm. Once a week right now. And they're well, usually massive. Eight orders. four. I mean, you have a. Just package it. And well, right now it comes pre-packaged. It gets opened up and gets has to be verified. So it's verified once before it ships out. But then we have to open it again and verify that it's in there or stuff's not in there, like it has to be resealed. So it's double checked anyways. Then it's resealed. Then distributed out. Okay. Here we would just have the inventory. We'd get the list of what the inmate wanted to order. They would package it themselves because we ordered it ourselves, then send it out. So we're kind of already doing it now. We have to recount everything. Yeah, you put free to charge ten dollars for the bar part. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're thinking. You're thinking of bait. I'm thinking good. I'm thinking good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm we got over that. We got to figure out how to pay for it. Okay, guys. I think we're essentially done. If you look on page nine, we get through the building systems. This is really going to be driven by configuration, the layout, the size of the building. This is where our engineers will get involved. Uh, to do design calculations and equipment sizing and clearances and that type of thing. Um, when we talked about uh, building receiving just now, uh, building maintenance, that's where we talked. There will be a maintenance, I would suggest, that we have a janitorial maintenance area, similar to what a period of those triangles you saw in the corners and usually make good spots for those. Uh, then we also talked about yard maintenance, potentially an alternate to this pole barn for large evidence storage. It's an alternate bid. Um, 
vertical circulation, just if it was a, you know, a multi-story outbuilding, we talked about fleet, vehicle maintenance, well, you don't, you don't currently do any fleet maintenance. It's yeah, all done now. Okay. Uh, we talked about large evidence storage. If you get that, we would incorporate some kind of processing if you needed it or wanted it. Uh, inventory and storage. And all kinds of things that anticipate the after plan for growth. There's a possibility of this so yeah and jack's absolutely right you have to constantly be thinking about future growth the housing condition so a couple of other things that we need to know have a conversation and guys have a couple of questions i promise it we'll leave but uh housing style I know last time we talked and I heard some conversation about linear, and then I know you two are Decatur, and I've heard talking about wagon wheel today, right? It sounds like maybe since you two are Decatur, you're treated. Yeah, so I believe we're going to be I like Decatur's, I like the wheel with some modifications. What I don't like is when you go in there, the second tier is the mesh. I don't want the mesh at all. I want really? to be solid. The steps and the landing is all that. Yes. I don't want that. No, look look to the our left. See those steps? We want all that solid. We look at it to get see through or Well, see you're talking. Do you want the risers put here? Yes. This section you get so to here, up, up at the top no space between the steps. Up to the top, it is. the spot you the first thing we've noticed is and I realize you're out, you can be seen, but it can happen. You make you a makeshift rope, you can hang yourself. Sure. Yeah. So what I would suggest, and I can send you some photographs of Franklin County, Ohio, which is that one we were talking about earlier. Um, we put a uh, a metal screen for the riser. Mm -hmm. So it's got very small holes to it. You can still see through it, but it prevents somebody from reaching that hiding under there. Yeah, either using it as a tie-off or they, the reason they didn't want it, they didn't want people doing pull-ups on, pull on, on the back side of the back of the track. Because right now, what's going up to keep people from jumping off in Decatur, that's also the floor that they step on. <coughs> I don't want that as the floor. Okay. So I know it's cheaper. Well, there's a reason why we do that. So, and I, I don't know if I have a picture with me if I can see photographs, but like an open grating. Yes. So yes. the treads are like an open grating. They have some grip to it. And the lot, oftentimes I've always do it in uh, galvanil steel, so it never has to be painted. It wears like iron. And we'll do the mezzanines that way. The reason that we do the mezzanine that way is so we don't have to provide sprinklers underneath them. Okay. So if the sprinklers above, it goes through the open grating. Okay. So by NFPA 13, you don't have to put fire protection under the mezzanine. Gotcha. I'm not, I'm not telling you that's a reason to do open grating. I'm telling you that's why. We all What's the cost that. difference? I, I couldn't tell you, but I could get back with you. Uh, the fire system is is it you have to put the sprinklers underneath that floor. There's no way that we can put them at a height that they can't reach there. Grab yeah, one of those pipes. So what we would have to do is put them in a security bulkhead, you know, that has the mm -hmm. recessed ambulance and some heads in it. Um, I got a question on that. <coughs> they don't have any that's uh, approved because we want to do it over there. You're right. talking about, it looks like a suction cup on a, on a big pump, right? It goes around that sprinkler head. You said something about it restricts the flow. We want to do it over here. I'm not sure. 
unless they've come up with something because it wasn't the state approved to do it. Because that's course. our issue. They're sticking down like that. They couldn't even have bust them over. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I do. Like a big pump. I don't have photographs. Uh, I mean, that's just a question. If we can do that, yeah. I, don't, I know I don't have a photograph. Uh, like still some North America, those the vandal resistant sprinkler heads, um, they're not the ones that are sticking out like that. The recess, yes. Those you can be hard pressed to recess those unless you build a trough or something to put them in, right? Yes, and I'm sorry, that's exactly what we well, do. Yes. Okay. Ones that stick down about that yeah, floor? No, there's yeah, no, that, that you no would, prescribed. Yeah. Structure I know of the state approved it. You'd cuss me every day if I did that. Oh, yes, yes, please don't do that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. No. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking if about. If we were to put a solid walking surface with mezzanine, which we can do, um, we'd have to put some kind of a, you know, no, here's what, okay, here's what we've done. From, if I had a marker board, I could sketch it. So, we're talking modular steel cells, so still North America. They come with a sandwich panel for the roof. You know, the cell up here mm -hmm. is also the walking surface of the cell above. Right. We can run sprinkler head from the back, which is where the fire water is coming from, through, and we can put the sprinkler head at the face, just under the mezzanine walkway. Make sense? <coughs> because we recently did that on the Trigger Walk Project. Maybe the yeah, maybe it's not So that's how we can do it. So it that makes sense to come out in a box? No, it's, it's, right it's a side wall. Yeah, it's not. It's not it's so, right, yeah, it'll be right, right, right there. there. Right yes. here. It's going to come out. But it, it'll, it'll, just, it'll just, the face of this be spray yeah. sidewalk now. So the spray is going to keep the bus it off. Well, it was still be G-Sest. It'll be a shroud or we'll create a box based cavity or something for it to be recessed in. But the pipe board is ran within the sandwich panel of the monster steel cell. So, so when they're delivered, delivered from Steel Cell North America, that pipe's running there. So we can do it. Um, if you don't want to, the bridge. The only thing I worry about the open grading is if an officer's uh, if an officer is standing under the grading, there's inmates above. Because you can pour true anything from that. Urinate. You you can spit on them. You can spit on them, or you can take something and hang yourself down here from up there through the grading. Because any one of those inmates will help you assist you in doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Or the air hammer. Okay. And do you guys like the idea of the jumper decaying detention screen across the face of the mezzanine? Oh, the screen like that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, without that, you couldn't have yeah. second floor. Yeah. Well, the one thing I like about the steps is someone's coming down the steps, someone could easily do a Superman. Yes. Put that nine degree cut out. I well, I think he talked push. about a yeah. mesh that he could put in there that's small, right? On the for the, the risers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. The risers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Next time I'm in, I'm in Franklin County, I'll take a photograph. It's out of construction. They did recently install it. It's just a punch metal. Um, okay, so we talked about the open housing. I'm sorry, the indirect positive of the wagon wheel. Uh, <coughs> modular steel cells, like modular steel cells. Is that what we looked at? Maybe? Yes. yes. The, only, the only thing about that that I noticed, inside the cell, looks like where they're creased together, there's this metal plate that is that looks like they can pop off. It's the same. They go the over the over and they go 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 over and
the Green Ridge. Ridge. And we've got some guys that have spent their time. We, we've had guys that said we don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's an urgent. <coughs> That's what he's doing. Just basically. Start working at yeah. I mean, just something you'd have that panel that were the two pieces would come together. It was a four man cell. And when it came in, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that face plate. You wouldn't over. have that if they were all two man cells. So they spliced. Okay, yeah. yeah. They only took us in four man and they were splicing together. We were sitting there noticing yeah. those seams where. Mm -hmm. you know, just, I mean, there was some gap like this. And there's some that even wider and just an invitation. You know, just somebody going two or three of our inmates and just went to town trying to pull them off. Now, the camera system I noticed, I don't know if it's because of this type of cell and it's pre made. <coughs> The camera is a bubble which can be easily tore off by the enemy. Where ours now are encased in a box. So where lock holding cells did they have cameras in? All the blocks. So it'd be like this block here, going up the stairs, there's a camera, but it's then being recessed or on the ceiling, it's on the sidewall, and it's just a dome sitting on the side. Okay. It would, it would look like an anti-vandal casing on it, yeah. but just where they positioned it looked like I think that was the biggest thing was the positioning because it was, it was reachable by enemies. Okay. Yeah. Where in some cases, I mean, they could have moved up a foot. So was the fire alarm. Yeah, yeah. Fire, more fire alarms than any. And then when, I mean, they were like just when we talked high. to the guys there, they even pointed out they were saying because we asked them what would you do different, and they were saying, well, we inherited the people that were walking and talking with us that were going to be staff or county employees were saying the placement of the cameras they would have chosen to do different because of blind spots and or accessing it by inmates. Yeah, they and said they, they had some shadows. Who is your current security system for Green? The Stanley? We're not going with them. I don't know what that is. <coughs> Something different. That's right. I didn't say or did I? <laughs> uh, Sorry, I spent that out in terms. That's really your decision. I mean, I just, you know, you have on my What I've heard from you would be silly to say. It's just like a, a camera there. You say they had one like at the top of the stairs to the left. Mm -hmm. You'd be better off having one back this you get more bang for your buck yep. looking that way. Exactly. Plus, you can't get to it. <laughs> one of the reasons why they argue, <coughs> one of the arguments of why they, another person pitched their two cents in it, the reason why it was up closer to the stairs was due to the fact that the control wagon wheel pod is they're sitting there and looking down at that angle, so they were getting a camera coming in and capturing other angles. Well, then you go up in the <coughs> ceiling where they can't get to, no. and you put what they call the fish eye, yeah. and you got four pictures. So, so I was up for call my next question. This, this picture here, look how much it's actually capturing. Well, we're and I thought that was a video top. camera. Yeah, so that would be perfect. Well, and it, it, they're probably seeing it inside the block. Pull them back all the way to the wall where the inmate door would be up top. Look how much we're actually going to catch. Or put two there. Yeah. So you've got 180 degrees. Yeah. Or like I said, you put a fish eye in the ceiling to go along with it. Yeah. you got four images. See a lot more. Yeah. yeah. So I was at a meeting Wednesday. We both were with SAS. Um, at Wayne County, Richmond, because uh, they're doing a security electronic upgrade there. And SAS did a very thorough presentation on camera styles, you know, the unifocal versus multifocal being 180 and 60. It was very educational. So, you know, if and when we get to that point, we'll have those conversations as well. One more question that's kind of critical for design. Master control. Partially elevated at ground level, elevated at second floor level. What I noticed at Decatur County, <coughs> it was nice having it above, but it's almost useless because you have the cameras. If he's looking over here, he ain't seeing what's going on over here. So they can really only see one at a time anyways unless we're going to have a staff by at least two people all the time. I think having it on the first floor would be better. Partially raising. 
three or four or five cents. Yeah. So that way they're a little bit higher than you can see, but I want them, if they're down here, they bring some out of the block, control really can't see unless they get up and look down versus if it was down on the first floor, up a little bit, they can see all the way around if they're escorting someone and moving them around. I run into issues with line of sight stuff like females and males. Now they house male and females in the same area. The one where there's just in a dark. So if they're housing females, or so I understand, but, yeah. but for you to look through and be able to see it, will you be able to see it from that elevation, or do you have to get up where you? Very the theory would be only one. Yeah, we're looking back at the elevator. So we're in some of these buildings. Really, the primary is the elevator itself. The value of almost none of those goes to up to it. Not that makes up anything. Yeah, because then you can't see them themselves on the first floor. Well, so it's either one of the really it's the, it's the it's the hallway use where you act. You literally would have to stand up and look over that little ledge. Uh, I mean, we, you can still see, but I, I don't see. I don't see a big advantage either way. Other well, the advantage is it's the lower same level. You can actually take in the hallway. Okay. Yeah, so it's officer is sitting in control. Right, you can walk. I mean, elevator on the second, uh, basically the second floor is low level. Put your cells and everything. No, no, they can look and see, and they can just look see. But they have a camera. That's the officer is part of the So this way, when the officer is walking or moving. He can constantly look and see the officer. I was just curious where, instead of having to get up. What facility had well, and look at it? Well, we had to but not. Yeah, it's just in the county. Where are we at, or where are they at? Are they are they most of them are out of the county. Oh, I know where they're at. I was just at the They're in, so the Star County is using the facility now. Yes, that's what I was just saying. Well, I'm really sure it did not like it. I don't want to look at that. It's the hard to appreciate one of those open rooms. It's almost easier to work in the closer to the church. Sure. Because I know, like in the Gator County, you had to go up to the one, three steps, or three flights, or somebody into it again. Yeah. But it was also actually in those day rooms, it was one of those that was easier to get to the floor. I have perception of seeing it. Well, I think we took three spaces of the second floor. Yeah. You know, the bathroom up there. Yeah. Look, yeah. One thing I like about it is the line of sight between that and the old roof is kind of intake. It's an intake like this one. And in between the two is the movement of the tips of the line. It's not only one side. Either way. I mean, I like it. Yeah. Either way. You can look back and look at the six foot wall. It's a nice place for conference table. Uh, I'm sure if we want to be sure that it is, we'll see the activity of the going on with the activities and the dirt. Some sort of vision here. Well, I think, I think we discussed it as what, what rooms we use that for at we'll class. I mean, you won't be able to hear what's going on, but you can look in and at we'll least see some observation. Well, the camera's got so sophisticated now they can sense motion, too much motion in the alarm for them. They see if they sense a different color, the alarm goes off. Yeah. So it's going to get pretty sophisticated. Right. It's going to be a task. Those cars have been pretty many. You know, they won't even come across the street. Assuming they're the yeah. same company. The I wouldn't allow them to secure the road. I might put a room on the junction point or two. It's I like I like the caters, elevator control room, but they had a drop in case there was a riot that they could drop stuff down like yeah, smoke. Stairs. But it was an, it wasn't a very good place because if the riot's going on in the cell block, they have nothing. It was just for the hallway. Uh oh. So kind of defeats the purpose a little bit unless the unless a little fight happens in the hallway. So it needs to be if it's going to be raised up, the control operator would need to be able to have access each cell block with the door. So so the, go ahead. So I, sorry, I wasn't hearing part of the conversation over there. So are we considering a raised master control now? If it's going to be functional because they had a little bit of waste of space and where their where their drop door was. It was only for the hallway. So by them being lifted up, they really couldn't see very well anyways because they're going through two tinted glasses. 
Yeah, yeah. Their, their visibility is not all that great. That's, really that's really an issue. Fun. Okay, so master controls, if they're truly elevated, you know, up at the upper level, if you don't extend the master control footprint out to the day room fronts, you're looking through two pieces of glass. Right. And it's not always the best view through those. Yeah. Right. In order to alleviate that, the only thing you can do is push the master control footprint out all the to the edge of the day room front, and then all of a sudden your master control becomes a lot bigger than it really needs to be. And then it kind of looks like ghost town up there. Um, or you never take your wounds back and forth and never Yeah, out. And, and you really can't see right down in front of the day room, which is kind of dangerous when the correctional officer's up at dinner and open the door. You know I don't think master control needs to see in the block versus just having the camera. What I want them to see is the hallway when the officers escort them and move them Then I would, based on that, I would suggest you keep it partially elevated yeah. Yeah, and not up. I agree. And you said Stark, Fountain County are the two. Uh, any uh, others? Oregon County. Stark partial too? Partially up? Yes. There you go. Yeah. That's not debate that all the time. So Star Wars. Now, working. Yo, Wilby. Those are partially. Uh, Elf Carter. So there we go. Yeah. So, okay, so that leads into are people satisfied? Does anybody want to go see another jail, any more jails? I think when this issue comes up, yes, you may want to go see a, and get an issue with the jail. If you want you to see a so particular problem. You can probably see, see the flag comes up, see the linear comes up. Now we can start arguing with the other control who should walk it down. Yeah. I was going to say it could be just as simple as two of us instead of four of us or five of us go to one of these that have the partial rays instead of a fully elevated tower just to see or control just to see if it floats the boat or not. Is, uh, where is the closest one? Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just not operational. Yeah. How close are they to being finished? Uh, um, Say something in March. Yeah. If we make the control room, or there's two different things we can do. Because if we build on later, <coughs> the another wheel, well, there's another control operator. Right here. There's another control room. Or we make the one control room we have big enough to house two people. Yes. And so I guess we'll with you know, all that Well, if we. Add another wheel, we grow on later, add another wheel, and that's another control room, right. another control room operator, right. more space, when we can just have the one master control for both sides. Okay. Why? Well, I, I mean, you've got to have two rooms, why not just have one? Well, it's a distance issue. Look at that. I can tell you, I've been helping you, but if you want to expand the one on the left, and you're going to expand it somehow, you can see the whole stuff on the right as well. Where we, we don't need to see if we have cameras, that's what I'm talking about. The cameras aren't the panacea. All they are is a catching instrument. You mm -hmm. catch people with a camera. You don't stop people with a camera. It still takes officers supervising people. You have to rely on the camera. Well, not the control operator. No, the, the control operator doesn't rely on his cameras. Yes, he does. Okay. My control operator relies on the cameras. He doesn't see what goes on there. That's probably because you're not designed properly. Well, that is 100% true. He has to look at the cameras. He's always looking at the cameras. That's how we have see. really good well, control operators. That that's how they catch stuff all the time currently. Well, I think what he's saying, what he's saying is, is that where the one control room uses, for the way of space, it's not really feasible to 
to the end. This is going to be long farther mm -hmm. from this one to that shell block lockdown. For the second, if you get the, the second control and watch it, tower, his distance to see inside the well, cell block is much further. That was the all within. Yeah. One. So he's there to see everything that he can. There's so much distance. It's real today around that priceless. Well, so we have was thinking it was going to be the longest. Now, look at that side of the world. Those cells, those cells, those cells, 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 so we're going to be between medical stuff. We're building the box to here, all the way across. This is going to be an option as to whether we build it as a shelled-in area or we build this as the outside wall and anticipate building that in the future. But the key is when they do expand, they still run around the same side of the wall. So they don't have to have anything, which is your concept. They can't work it. Take this huge operation. Well, they're going to do it if they the same box. For example, you the one guy. Yes. And we'll figure it out. That's what I'm saying. One of those is that two groups. Of course, it's going to work by watching it 100 and the other. One final question, I promise. <laughs> no, you said it the last three. You, you have seen steel cell North America product. Modular steel cells. I stood up what that is a Decatur. <laughs> North America. Are you satisfied in seeing that product? You have talked about the same. Oh, that's what I was earlier. It was with the bugs. How long? Do those typically hold up? Because when we were sitting there just walking through it, it had been used, and I was popping it with my hand and I leaned on the corner, I, it gave flex. And I'm sitting there wondering, because I didn't ask him if I could climb up on there and just spend 10 minutes bouncing to see. And the guy from Maxwell was talking and up, said that it should never flex, it should never bend, and everything else. And I'm just. Are we sure to certain that's still some of the product? Well, it's just still some sort of And how's it replaced if it is messed up? They come in, break the seal, and reweld them. And I asked them what the warranty line was. And I've never, okay, so I've never known a steel bond and a modular steel cell to fail. I'm not saying that it hasn't happened, but I've never heard of it. Well, I'm just, that's what's the curiosity, because we were looking at it brand new and we hadn't seen anybody and I hadn't, yeah. 120 days ago, I never thought about looking at anything on confinement. It wasn't in my wheel scope and didn't care. Only reason I'm asking is if you want to go see another install, another jail project to look at modular steel cell, we can do that if you need, feel like you need to. They're all over the place. Yeah. Who's that uh, who's boy from Colorado? JC. Yeah, yeah. SSI. Yeah, no, like that. But, you know, we've never used them, thank God, for that. But there's one county, maybe? Yeah, I think it is Davies. Davies, where they use the cell. If you want to go see a cell that you don't want to use, compare it. Yes. Davies County, in general. Yeah. Yeah, you were responsible. Yeah, I'll go on to Bass Sturgis and see what he thinks because they're doing something. Yeah, Jackson Jail, Jackson, Michigan is same in SSI. The problem is there's just not there's two or three manufacturers and the size still is just gone off the bat. This MSSI one, when he does get a contract, he goes to the Department of Corrections in Colorado and get a prisoner to all the cell phone for him. So you can imagine that. You can imagine what the quality is. You know, I'm gonna teach you how well today, my man. Great. Okay. We don't have any of I'm hoping. Now we're going to floor plan to figure out footage. Footage would be a big factor in the initial cost issue. We don't have a lot of it. I thought it was pretty liberal footage, but it's going to stay within that. Because I think it's 98,000 feet. Okay. So good. Mm. The bigger the jail, the more efficient they become. 
the last square footage they represent for south. So if I were to go to Carroll County and get 100 beds, they have a much larger square footage per bed than you guys would. So I have a question. If they come back and they start plugging the, we're going to use a rough sheet saying 300. If they come back and adding into the wheel with what we've talked about and put in or infirmary or padded cells or anything and we're at a 318 capacity is that something that you guys are going to bat an eye at or is that one of those that be okay as far as when they come in and try and fix the numbers for the actual he won't, he won't design the 300. He'll design the D with an anticipated D right in the ballpark for it. might be okay. 296. Like well, that's why I was wondering. That's why I was wondering because if we throw out the 310. I know with the money. That's why I'm just saying if it fits the budget right. and we come back because I know to the I know there's the plus minus and that's why I know we throw out or we discuss trying to shoot for 300. That's why if it came in at 312. Honestly, yeah. as of tonight, the thing that was the budget test is that courtroom. Because it's not just a little security. Oh. I mean, it's the courtroom. It's, 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 a, it's a whole annex being built into the plane. Exactly. So, I had the same concern with the same thought. And in the back of my head, as we were discussing that at the beginning of the meeting, in my head, I'm sitting there thinking, how can I design this in such a way I'm going? Such that it's an alternate bed that we can we can cut cut away if we have to. Yeah, and that's so we can still design it and take bid on it as an alternate, and if it's come in favorably, great. But if not, there it goes. Yeah, it's not embedded within the footprint of our building. So the steps are figured the right way. But one of the challenges is to be able to do the cut. And I think that's why Sheriff and Jasper were both looking at having it as. The separate entrance, the separate staffing is more or less designed in the flow of how, if it was just tacked on and the wall was kicked out for the length of the administrative area, just dropping it on there and not having to use a common area on ours. If we did, I, or at least that's if I was looking at putting a Lego block in it and removing it out uh, and not changing. The conceptual design of what we're doing. I don't know how you guys can function up here without something building. Well, I'm not talking about some huge thing, but you really need some sort of minimal pole barn or something like that to deal with all the other issues. Well, I heard the other story mm -hmm. being a small park, you know, kind of a little grass. No, I, th I think <coughs> you know, that, that's come into play in my head. I mean, we're going to have to have. We're not talking about just a riding wheel. We're talking about probably a tractor of some size. Uh, but I'm still trying to get the concept of this building. I just had him, he came back and we came back to Decatur and I drive over there to the property. But I'm trying to get in my head the concept of that building on that property and what is open on the outside. On that left thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's got to be able to do that. Once he gets the footage in the basic schematic, he can overlay that over the site. And you can pretty good feel for how far the trees are. And, 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 and as far as as far as the uh, <coughs> courtroom goes, that was a a deal that I kind of brought up that was initially just a hearing room. Uh, and we talked about it back and forth a little bit. Uh, I'm talking about a courtroom. I'm, I'm not talking about a place for people to come in and say, ooh, look how beautiful this is. I'm talking about a plain, simple, simple, simple courtroom. You know, that can that accommodate. Say, there's two things that are going to drive the cost. One is the bed count. The bed count is the square foot. Right. The biggest cost for the building is the square foot. And if you're going to save millions on the ceiling tower, you're going to have to save it on the foot. Right. So just keep your planes or whatever it takes me to get people. This is Perry County, but off the vehicle Sally Porter, right here is where we have lawnmower shortage. 
I'm not saying that that would serve your needs, but you know, it could be made bigger, but it's just another way to approach it. Yeah, it's interesting, Scott's right, but so you gotta deal with the gasoline and cars and all that. Right. But in Miami County, this wall line here was expanded to include, I don't know, it's 12 feet wide or so, and they put the maintenance guy's office over there on the far side of the salad court. And we've solved a lot of the problem with gasoline and all that kind of stuff. Still, you can't that way. You can't put a truck <coughs> Right. Uh, yeah, I, mean, could, roll I, could, I could use the opportunity to go before the commission to say, what about putting the gas tank out there? So, but anyway, thank you. Yeah, elevator. Well, just like you were talking these guys are taking the they can easily conceptualize that. We don't have a little bit of days where we can just sort of under the guys of darkness. Why don't you just go out there at the back of them? I'm pulling that sucker in. Thank you. And now it takes 15 different formations. Yeah. So they call you. Like, um, <laughs> just have questions. Just start to pick your head. Scott, did you get those dates that I'm not going to be around? I did. 14, 15, 15. Yeah, I used to go with the company. It's not that it's critical to ask it, but if you can work around that, would be great, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are we going to do an email thing and decide next meeting? Whenever you're ready to yeah, right. yeah, let us thank you. Um, let us go back. We'll update this building program based on our conversation here. Um, still consider a draft, but 90, 95% accurate, and we're going to tweak it a little bit as we go. But if we'll begin laying out some spaces, but let us begin pushing and laying sure. out some of these spaces. And once we feel like we're heading in a direction that we can justify sitting down and kind of explaining, we'll get in touch. And Sounds good to me. We'll keep it.